This video is sponsored by the design mechanism, the makers of Mithras. Mithras is a registered trademark of the Design Mechanism Inc. used with permission, all rights reserved. Okay, I'm going live, so watch it. <laughs> By the way, bye. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Hello and welcome to this week's. Um, oh wait, well, I just remembered I can't play. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 you are what, sorry? What's joshing? Joshing. joshing. Oh, I've not heard joshing in years. Do you know, I, I, it might be a bit weird tonight because um, I've got wine. All right. And, and I'm, I'm a very small second. glass. I, this is my second one. I'm just, I'm just really pleased that I've got a hard limit on your sounds. Right, oh, can, can I just say, I might be funny. I've got beer tonight. <laughs> Just the one. <laughs> Jesus, stick a big straw in it. <laughs> am I am I too loud? No, no. It um, you it's come me. you peek in my head. You're all peeking my headphones, but when I don't you peeking your head at all. But when you go out, the desk audio going out to stream elements has a hard um, hard limiter of minus six decibels, so it uh, it doesn't go any see, higher. I might be better off sending it to minus eight. No, it's either minus six or minus three. Um, so, but with, minus eighty. But with you and guys, put a, put a hard encoder on it uh, at the differential end to prevent feedback. Yeah, she can't handle it, Captain. <laughs> she cannot handle it. Yes, she's gone. <laughs> Have you seen the new things that Streamlabs OBS has brought out? Selective recording. So, do you know if you're recording um, uh, ESO? Yeah. But, but you're also uploading it to um, YouTube afterwards. Yeah. You can select, if you're recording it to upload to YouTube, you can select what it records. So rather than oh. having all the um, sort of like donations and stuff coming up, you can tell it not to record that. Is that a plugin then? No, it's something that is available now on any of their, um, any of their things. On OBS? Mind. Streamlabs OBS, slobs. Mm. Yeah, Slops, but yeah. it must it must actually come because is that something to do with um it's the latest update that they've done. Yeah, so but Slobs actually runs with OBS, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. That's the actual main I don't know. I, software. I, click, I double click the icon and it starts. Yeah, so I'll have a look at that. Hi Tom Tom, by the way. Hi uh, Tom Tom. Uh, um yes, yeah, so I, Tom Tom, tell me the way to go home, please. Tonight is going to be me um, flying by the seat of my pants uh, in tonight's adventure. Um, Longshanks EPG unfortunately cannot make it, um, but he's not going to be around for the rest of this um, this sort of series of adventures, which means that um, 
the the faithful um, reliable threesome, uh, which means that hazardous hazardous tanking. Yes. So yeah. it, uh, <laughs> that's your sex tape. So I, I I will be handing out free iron armor. But I just had a thought. <laughs> Gulliver is probably so st not strong enough. You'll actually probably put him on, and your weight go <laughs> your weight limit. <laughs> even even wearing two pieces of padded armor. Yeah, I, um, I'm near enough at my um, encumbrance limit. Good grief! So you you would just like. <laughs> Just put Gulliver in a, like a, a steel ball and run. <laughs> yeah, right. I, think that, I think that's really, really yeah. interesting because people say, well, like, well, you know, put us armor on. But yeah, you can't wear armor. It's yeah. just the same as his his strength so low that he can, he cannot lift a, a one handed long sword with one hand. Yeah, has to use two to lift it. Otherwise, he can't even lift it off the ground. So you. You can't lift Hengus's sword. Is that true? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and, and, and you can't run. <laughs> I can't lift Hengus's sword. If I, if I try to lift it, I would have to use two hands. And... <laughs> but that's, I, I really like that type of thing. Hengus is a well endowed man. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I can't lift his shield. What? Well, what? What is? Is it the? Um, what film is it when one guy says that he's going to the toilet, and the, the other guy says, "Can you come with me?" And he says, "Why?" He says, "Because I've been told not to lift heavy objects." <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like a Bruce Willis thing to say that. I, I, I think it's like two two people two like cops or something like that anyway it might have been a bruce willis i just not like uh we'll get oh okay who chuggawag is now typing in <laughs> uh, 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 yeah i'll tell you what else it could have been and it didn't come up with the answer but it could have been um something like lethal weapon or something like that oh that it's uh, it's maybe that type of humor yeah it's i i tell you what is lost boys uh, no lost boys is the one with the that's the vampire one yeah yeah it's something like bad, that bad boys bad boys Bad boys, bad boys, bad boys. What are you going to do? do? What are you going to do when they Yeah, get so... Bad anyway... Bad boys, bad boys. Um, before we get on to the synopsis of what's happened, which allows me to do a quick amount of messing about in the background, I'm going to allow the players an opportunity to say um, what, who, they're, who they are and who they're playing tonight. And we'll pass over to the person who always goes first. Go for it. Hi guys, I'm Chalk My character is called Gulliver. No second name, no surname for Gulliver. Um, he is an orphan, um, originally not hailing from the, um, the the land of Odis. He travelled across here with several others on his personal quest, which was to um, improve his sorcery um, uh, under instructions of his um, old um, mentor, Master Healy, who had learned um, several spells from a, an ancient tomb that they had found, um, the traveling journals of a, a sorcerer known as Fladnag. Um, it, um, the last page of that book um, had him um, traveling to a distant land, the land of Odis. So that is where um, Gulliver's quest took him. Um, Arriving at Odis, he joined the Order of the Kraken, which is one of the four um, sorcery orders of Odis. His particular one specializes in spells evolving around communication, transportation, and teleportation. Uh, as a sorcerer, he can shape his spells. He can um, change the um, effects to suit his needs. He can change range, magnitude, or intensity. Um, Distance, oh, that's range again, isn't it? Distance and range are the same things. <laughs> um, number of targets, Duh. that's that they can have. <laughs> Sorry, it's a wide uh, <laughs> Distance. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> and range. <laughs> um, number of targets that they affect, or he can even combine several spells into a single casting. Um, he does that by ex uh, expending um, shaping points. He also has several minor spells. He refers to them as his cantrips, but they're um, based around the um, folk magic schools of the um, Mithras spellcasting. Um, he also is... Um, 
he was been injured recently um took a very nasty uh, magical attack to his um his leg which um has left it um a bit maimed he um he walks with a limp it does hamper his movement um but he's young and he's not one to get let those types of things um get him down unlike some people and i shall pass on to were you sticking the finger up at me then, Mr. Pickles? I, oh, no, I, I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Some reason. Anyways, I guess I'm going, I'm Mr. Pickles, and I play Barlaby Fumus, which is our team's theist. Uh, Barlaby has two categories of magic that he uses, though he calls them all generally prayers. He has folk magic, and he has theist miracles. Uh, the theist miracles have their own special pool of devotion points, different from my magic points, so I can use them a limited number of times, but it's not tied to my magic, which is pretty pretty nice. Through my goddess Amriel, who is the light moon goddess, I'm able to do things such as heal people, uh, put limbs partially back together, uh, remove poison and disease, create magical shields that glow with moonlight that reflect, uh, reflect weapons away, uh, can keep people going. Amriel gives a lot of uh, energy-based uh, miracles and, and prayers. So I can keep people from being fatigued, or I can cause them to become potentially numb in their, their limbs. Is that why you're so popular with the women? Yes. <laughs> Barley Fumus has taken a vow of chastity after his girlfriend was killed in a by a demon nightmare thing. Um, Barlaby was also once a bard. In fact, that was his original goal in life, was to be a musician, Flying Fingers Fumus, I believe. But his hands are all mangled, so that's dead. Passing it on to Hazra, or um, I should say Medivac. Medivac, why thank you, Mr. Pickles. Hello everybody, my name is uh, Medivac and I play Hazra Khan. He is formerly from the ghost clan nomad group, clan type people from the steppes. And um, he, he he was separated from them and he is from the from, well, from Northern Steps of Odess. Um, he's following with, with his group here. He is the scout tracker, go-to um, stealthy person, um, and possibly the new... Slash tank. Um, tank. <laughs> 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 we don't know. Um, he, he, he He's had some bad times, really, because he um, he had a bad accident in the first uh, adventure we had where he um, he picked up this, this stone, which he thought he would save from the, the, the bad guys getting it, and it turns his arm all black, so he has one black arm. It doesn't impair him anyway, he just looks god-awful, which is why you will see him always wearing um, his padded armour, which is, some say looks like pyjamas, but most don't. Um, he is very uncomfortable in cities, he loves being outdoors. He's a very um, wilderness person. He has a house or a little hut, sorry, um, just outside the forest of, um, uh, of where we are at the moment, of Lindo. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it, really. He, he's, he loves his shorts. So he does short spear, scimitar. He's very happy with those. Um, his short spear has been handed down from his father. Um, he may have replaced the. The, the, the handle and, and the tip many times, but it's still the same spear. So with that, I shall pass on to our wonderful GM. The, the, the hassled GM. Right, okay Hassel, then. Hassel. So this is episode three of the story of Sewer Jack. Sewer Jack is a story that um, has been around in Lindo, the town where the characters are currently staying and adventuring from. It's a story that's been told over decades, um, mainly to scare the children and the young in the slums. And this idea that Sewer Jack is a bit like the bogeyman or somebody who will come and chase you. Um, and, you know, if you're not in bed by the time the clock strikes a certain time, then Sewer Jack will come and um, eat you. Um, up to this moment in time, the story has been just that, a story, um, until uh, a few days ago when um, a woman um, approached 
approached Bartleby, um, a woman from the slums who was very concerned that her daughter had been um, massacred, killed, murdered, ripped to pieces, and the city guard was doing nothing about it. Bartleby took up the challenge on, on his honour. He rallied his party together and they started to investigate what was actually going on. They went into the slums and found the, the murder site and um, interrogated a rather drunk um, individual who talked about um, the um, alleyway being his and presenting them with various bits of information. Um, I think it was at that point that did somebody find the first locket? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay then. So that that was um, all well and good and the party then headed back to their abode. It was Hengist. Yeah. Um, Hengist found it and then um, everybody went back to their abodes and when Hengist went back to his house and the party weren't aware of this um, he had a lady caller who said that who wanted him to open a door Hengist was unable to do it and so he sent his manservant to rally the party once again to come to Hengist's aid Hengist was in bed and ill and poorly from last week and so um, later we found out it was food poisoning that Hengist had and so the um, party went to the door um, they went into a, uh, a rather um, upper class, a house of the gentry, some kind of gothic mansion. And they went in and found that um, a, a woman um, had recently arrived um, in the house. And he, they were taken down to the, through the cellar to a locked door. However, what the party found out was that the door was not just manually locked. It was sealed with a, a spell that Gulliver knows from his sorcery spells. Um, a, a spell called... Um, anyway, um, I forget where we're up to, but they opened the door and they found some kind of strange... Um, would laboratory be the right word for it? There was some kind of... Um, chemical preparations there was a whole load of books and scrolls that Gulliver found it extremely interesting Hazra saw a whole load of um, cages with dead animals in it and the whole thing was quite strange um, they left there and headed back through the um, house and as they went through the house a dust cloth was pulled off a painting and they saw um, a, a, a picture of a, a, a girl or a woman that looked, that had a similar necklace, a similar amulet round um, her neck. And so the party started to sort of like think that, you know, the locked door and, and sewer jack and everything, the murder was all connected. As they went back into Lindo, it seemed that um, the murderer had struck again um, under the premise of actually administering last rites to the body. Bartleby took the group down and um, checked out the area and lo and behold there was this um, a, a similar butchered young girl had been killed um, just on the cusp between the um, slums and the main town. And it was while they were there that Hazra, I think, disturbed a bit of dirt or something and found um, a similar um, locket, I think, there. And then as you were going back into Lindo from that, because you deceived the guards really well, um, Gulliver, I think you had gone, you had gone back to the hairy hobgoblin and mm. then um, a bluebird had arrived who are the messenger services of Lindo. And there was a, a request from your mentor, Danielle Duncan, um, to for you to attend her and that there was um, a need to talk to you. 
and I think that is where we left it if I'm correct we did indeed mm -hmm. yeah um, so yeah so you are um, in the um, hairy hobgoblin it's probably um, early evening um, you know you're probably um, did all the last rites so the b before um gulliver decides what to do about the message because you've now got it oh yes and that was it um he basil came over didn't he and was saying about how silly you were believing in somebody called um sewer jack etc mm. etc et and um you've got the message and it does say to um meet her the next day and i think also you were discussing about hazra keeping an eye on the house through the night i think that mm -hmm. that's yes that came up didn't it yes yeah so we, we'll pick up um the adventure we'll say it's about seven o'clock at night okay you're here um basil has put on a hearty meal for you and that there's plenty to eat because he normally serves four and hengis is still ill in his um posh house with his manservant so there's just three of you tucking in and gulliver's already grabbed um hengis's share of the cheese and is busy chomping down on it um as um you discuss um any ideas and ways forward and I will stop yattering and leave it, hand it over to you guys. Have we given back um, the the necklace that we found with at Mary Gold's um, or Rose's murder site? Have we brought that back to to Rose? Um, or Mary Gold? I mean, yeah. I the you mean the the false the really badly made one? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. No. I as far as I'm aware, you've still got that. Yeah, we we haven't you, we haven't returned. It, it was something that we were going to that we had discussed doing this this adventure last week. Yeah, because yeah. I, mean. I still have the heart shape locket on me. And if you remember, you you sort of like had um, gone round the crowd before you went, and that there was various bits of information. And if you remember that. Um, there were I think you had talked to the people was that right and they had said about um, what the creature might have looked like etc etc yeah climb at the wall and whatnot yeah and they sort of like gave you um, various descriptions yeah. I have a question yeah. how come Medibac was off all last week and that door still squeaking do you, do you know what yeah <laughs> <laughs> Come on, come on. It's your fault. <laughs> so, so, so Gulliver's going to, she's going to say, the, 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 the message that the bluebird dropped off, it was from, it was from my, my, my mistress, Mistress Duncan. She, she said that she has information about the, about the deaths. I, st I still think these deaths are, are all, are all tied to, are all tied to the house where we've just been. It, it just. It, too much a coincidence that, you know, they, they they came back to Lindo two two weeks ago, two days ago, and that's when they that's when the death started. Has it has it been one per night now? It, it seems that way, but it seems a bit of a the, 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 the only thing we have found that's linked that these deaths together is his necklaces, his silver 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 lockets and silver. Did did you not find the similarities between the, the 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 dead people and the and the 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 person that was in the picture? A bit a bit too a bit Similar. too much of a coincidence. Yeah, that it's is dead. yeah that is correct. The the picture looked like Rose, and it looked like um, um, Melissa. Uh, I think that's the name of the um, woman that you found. Or was it Matilda? Matilda. Yeah. Matilda Gray. Well, I agree. There's something evil afoot here, whether it's a something pretending to be a, a monster uh, or a myth. Well, we should find it. Um, but who, we should also return. The, who, who was the other person in, in the house? 
Yeah, you mean apart from the servants? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I do not know. I mean, surely uh, the, the, the thing that would stand out to me would be um, uh, some yellow eyes and and claws and being able to climb up walls would stick it like a saw. I don't know, a saw antelope in, 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 in a forest. You know, you know about monsters, Bartaby. So, something that's something that's old, very old, with with yellow yellow eyes, with strength to rip things to pieces limb by limb, with lots of blood, lots of blood. Yeah, so I, I um I know. You're not going to see goblin, are you? Sure, my friend. Yeah, they live underground. One silver. He says goblin. Uh, I'm gonna roll lore monsters if that's okay with yeah, you. Yeah, um, and this one. Yeah, I seem to have lost uh, goblins. My. Um... <laughs> uh, you just wanted that roll to fail. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you owe me one silver. Yeah. It, it could be a dragon. Oh, failed the roll. No, it's a goblin. <laughs> Goblins have been known to evolve and sprout out wings and fly in the sky sometimes. It's not out of the question that a fire-breathing, flying creature... Do you wish to use any luck on your world? Yeah, actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and use a pile of luck. <laughs> okay, then. So there, you know from your sort of, like, history lessons and your reading of several um, tomes um, over the years that generally anything that actually... Um, massacres or rips things to bits tends not to be doing it for um, consuming flesh purposes but most because mostly because of um, anger or rage or sheer want of destruction there's various um, sort of like monsters that exist uh, that you know about um, whether or not these are true or not um, you know, remains to be seen. But there's huge half men, half man, half bull creatures that have tremendous strength that they can rip things together. There are stories of men and women and uh, townsfolk that actually transform into um, enraged creatures from wolves to boars to bears um, during the night and many stories of the fact that say that they can't actually control their, their anger and they go on um, unwilling sometimes hunts where they grab innocent people and tear them to bits. Of course, linked to all that are also all the stories of big cats, um, huge panther-like creatures. Although you think probably those are more out to kill for food rather than just wanton um, destruction. It, it's de it, whatever it is, it's definitely linked to that house. I just, it was, it was the way that, that, what was she called? Was it Melissa? It Matilda. Matilda, the way that, that she described the, well, almost like talked about the, of a person who sounded right, was really, really old. Yeah, so Matilda is the woman and Melissa was the picture on the wall. Oh, right, yeah. Sorry, I... Um, did, did it's because you've got so many M. I know, I've got myself... Did you, did you have the M, M names up? Yeah. When it's adventure. <laughs> the Big Bumper Girls Guide to Names. And yeah. I, I, I sort of like, I was thinking, if it's in the family, they'll probably want to keep some consistency. You know, a bit like, you Mark. know... You know, if somebody's oh. some's mother's called Marion, then somebody yeah. else. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she did that. She did that. See what I did there? <laughs> yeah, so I did that. It is what it is. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which ba basically means that. <laughs> <You're adopted. laughs> yeah. Anyway, I felt bombshell. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Black sheep. <laughs> you yeah. left alone when you found out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, group hug. Uh, yeah. I've just <laughs> because it's just looking at us. I think. Uh, no, oh, no, I've just sent him a message <laughs> to <laughs> explain. <laughs> <laughs> No, no Christmas dinner this year for you. And uh, and Marky Mark has just appeared in the chat as well. Hello, Marky. Mark. Hi, Marky. Hey, hey Marky Mark. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, it must well, definitely be linked to the to, to the house and and maybe even the family some somewhere and whatever it is it seems to be maybe killing every night, which means that we only have tomorrow really to to find out what's happening because. Tomorrow evening, the chances are it's going to kill again. So we we need to be in the we need to be in the the. I'm dancing along to the music. Well, yeah, it, <laughs> it, it, it's Basil's background band. <laughs> he's yeah. got some, he's got some live act in the background. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mary Vack now. I'm watching Strictly Come Down. <laughs> there, there's two uh, man and a woman, so sort of like doing swirls on the table, <laughs> and some people holding up cards so, with numbers on. Uh, Asher will take a drink of his drink and, and look at um, at Gulliver's. So, so do you think that I should do what they said and and go watch the, the house tonight? I will go up high on the roof so I could have a good vantage point over. The majority of the house. The 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 girl that we've just seen, about to be. I I didn't get a close look at her, but the the the, the merchant's daughter. How, how long has she been dead? Um, was she killed this evening? No. The the so her body was found sort of like later on. In, so the day that you got up and went up to the um, um, Matilda's house. She was found there, because if you remember, when you came back into the town, the crowd had already gathered, everybody had found her, and that's when you think. So she was she was um, killed last night, if that we meant. Does that make sense, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so the, the, there's a chance that, well, that, that Jack could actually strike again tonight. And both killings have been in the the slums. Yeah, got that. Yeah, the the last one was almost it's it was almost the last one. If if she had been a few steps closer to the the gate, she would have been mm. out of the slums. But and that that's why probably the town guard has started to take a little bit more of a, a concern yeah. about it. Do you think maybe, maybe she knew that she was being hunted about to be, and she was actually running for the gate when Jack got her, took her from behind and ripped her to pieces? Just can you see the Lindo? No. Yeah. So the the pre, the the latest body was sort of like here. Hmm. The body beforehand was over here. So this this is the better area of the correct. That, that, yes, yeah. the dockland, yeah. and that's the slums. Correct. That, that's right. So this is the slums, and this is the slums. So the the port over this area is not when uh, where the um, visitors would arrive. It's not where the the expensive merchant trades of silk and spices would arrive. This is sort of like here. In this area, it would be Brilliant. things fish. like um, fish, um, meats, um, anything that is slightly more smelly and disgusting, or where the unfortunate people would dock. So, you know, if people were coming in under the cover of night, they would um, come into that area rather than the, the previous area. I think it's a good idea that that maybe the the the, the house is it is monitored tonight, but it, it's it's going to be a, a a large a large area, and I don't I don't know if it's if it's somebody you know with yellow eyes that moves with this great speed and. 
I don't know how it's going to be getting into those areas where it is, because it won't be able to go through the through the gates because there's a guarded. But, but didn't one of the, the witnesses say that it could climb up walls? It was eight feet tall and it could just scale up walls. Well, because I mean, yeah. remember, remember the last victim was in a dead end um, alleyway, or was it the, the first one? And apparently the the, the assailant, the, 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 the creature that killed this, this poor girl, climbed up the wall to get out that way. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. I, I just so just just actually all of a sudden the the tavern door bursts open, and when I say bursts open, it doesn't. It really does. It it looks as if um, there's two people rushing in um, through the the doorway, and the door sort of like bashed back in such a force that it makes a resounding bash that everybody almost like stops what they're doing and sort of like looks round. And even Basil, who's got his cloth in a in a tankard, um, wiping out, uh, you know. Uh, putting a bit of gob in there be, you know to clean it and polish it up even he sort of like stops and through the people um, you can see that there's two women and um, they both have um, heavy um, evening um, robes and cloaks on with cowls um, over their heads and you can see from where you are that they appear to be out of breath they seem to be um, have been almost like running and they just sort of like burst um, into the um, into the uh, hairy hobgoblin and everybody sort of like stops and the entertainment stops and everybody sort of like looks at them and um almost like um on uh, recovering um almost almost like regaining control over the the situation the, the taller of the two women um drop drops her cowl um down and you instantly recognize that it it is matilda and um, the the owner of the house she's rather red um in in the face and could you make perception rolls for me please gulliver wants to um he wants to um i got a 47 standard uh, he wants to sort of like when he sees her taking a hook back he's going to almost like push his chair back and sort of like stand up and and sort of like wave yeah and she she sort of like uh, she, she sort of like regains her, her composure and drops her thing and sort of like sees you there and almost like quite uh, very acting sort of like goes oh oh yes there and starts to um, move um, along and um, very gracefully and um but very purposefully um the the woman next to her seems to be a little bit um younger and you she sort of like takes her um cowl off at the as in as soon as um uh, matilda does that and you recognize her as one of the um the the servants from the house you you probably you're, you're not very none of you are very familiar about the gentry and how things um operate like that but you probably think it's either her maid or you know a bit like the equivalent of hengis's manservant and she sort of like um re regains her composure at mid order does and sort of like walks um a, 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 along across the front of the bar towards your table and as she, as she um walks by she sort of like turns um to basil and says in a in an almost like shaky voice um sort of like says um some of your um, um best wine please and we will require a tab and um, she, he sort of like looks um, puzzled and uh, Basil says, and who will the tab be for? And she said, oh, we are um, the Grime family. Uh, we have returned to Linda. You may have known about us. And Basil um, sort of like has almost like a blank look, but assumes that when she says the Grime family, that it's somebody um, in, um, important. He says, I have a good 
a good bottle of wine that I've been saving for quite a time as he goes into Somerset. And, um, and then she sort of like comes over um, to your um, table and uh, the, the maid sort of like pulls out um, the, the um, chair near, near her and she sort of like, uh, Matilda nods to her and sits down. And from your um, perception roles, um, you, there's various things that you, you all made them so you all see this I information um, straight away and um, the first thing is that you notice that her boots um, are quite wet and um, muddy um, you figure that she hasn't just been walking it, it definitely looks like she's running the other thing that you do notice although they're um, calming down now their faces were probably um, quite red and flushed and there's um, beads of perspiration and of course ladies do not um, perspire they just gently glow and they do indeed uh, and um, she sort of like uh, settles down and the, the other thing that that you notice is that um, there, there definitely seems to be that nervous twang um, in their voice. Um, Matilda most definitely is trying her best to suppress it and try to come across very regal and, you know, high gentry and very much this is what's happening. Um, but the, the young ma um, maid, her, her maid, uh, her lady servant, is definitely, you can see, is um, finding it a lot harder to keep control and there's almost like um, her eyes are um, uh, watering and welling up um, with tears. Gulliver's going to say, um, the, the hairy hobgoblin isn't really noted for its wine, but, but, but Basil normally keeps the eggs in the jar that he normally dishes out when people ask for, for wine. Matilda is aware of your name, isn't she? Yes. Yeah. Oh, um, she's getting it wrong. Oh, yes, that's right. Um, she sort of like um, looks at you and sort of like says, um, of, of course, of course, but I am sure that he will provide something very suitable for uh, an acquired taste like my own. Oh, I do hope so, for your sake. Have, I'm afraid... I'm afraid Hengist is is still still ill. He's 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 come down with something really really bad. It's food poisoning or 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 he did get he he did get ages ago he did get scratched by by some some undead monster which and anyway. Oh how dreadful! I um, I hope he uh, actually regains. I I have. Well, I, I know, I sorry, I have on good um, knowledge from other people that he has a rather healthy um, constitution and has great stamina. Can, can we can, can we pass on a message to him when we you have you have come to see Hengist, haven't you? And the, at that moment, Basil arrives and sort of like puts down um, a tray and there's a like a, a bottle of um, wine that seems to be rather dusty and um, the, the cork has been pulled out and stopped back in and he sort of like brings it um, down there sort of like two goblets, pewter goblets and he sort of like puts it down on the table looking rather uncomfortably and uh, Matilda does sort of like looks at him and then looks at the um, goblet and then looks at him again and he goes, oh yes, sorry my lady. And he sort of like puts his teeth in the cork and goes like that and pulls it out and goes to spit the cork out across the room. Then suddenly goes and takes it out and sort of like pours um, um, uh, uh, some into the um, goblet and he sort of like fills it almost like up to the top and Matilda looks quite um, disappointed and she sort of like picks up the goblet um, takes the tiniest sip from it and puts it down and says that will do nicely 
like this as if he was only meant to put a small amount in for the tasting and he says oh yes yes no 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 problem at all uh, and, <laughs> thank you basil and she says she says um a chair for my uh, maid please and she's she just sort of like announces it to everybody it's not as if she's she's actually sitting um uh, i'll put pop her on for you um she's actually um sitting um here gulliver's already um, stood up so he, he's just going to pull his the chair that's behind him sort of like to the corner there and he'll he'll pull the he'll pull this one so that he sat next to <laughs> yeah that's a because Str strength check that that's um just to let you know um hengus is on that one but grayed out so i'll just move no, right. him <laughs> 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 so, so to the stream it looked like you were yanking the chair <laughs> yeah and she sort of like uh, am, I, am I correct in saying that since these murders have, these murders have been done by somebody very strong incredibly strong oh, it's God, yeah. incredibly strong with good constitution and since they started we haven't seen Hengist <gasps> da, da, da. shut the fuck <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, she's sort of like... The, the... Oh, it's going to be one of these ones. Oh, this is going to... Oh, in world's well done. It's going to be one when all of a sudden <laughs> we, we come to face um, Jack and all of a sudden Longshanks' image comes back up <laughs> and all the time. <laughs> and uh, he's going to go... I... <laughs> there you go. I am Sewer Jack. No, it's not. Can you ask me? I am your oh, father. Do, do you want to know? The, the, I've spoiled it for you. The, the ending's going to be so disappointing. Now. <laughs> <laughs> it really is going to be. Uh, so the, the, the maid sort of like um, notices that you pull out the chair for her Gulliver and she sort of like slightly blushes um at, with your gallantry and she sort of like um places herself and she sort of like sidles slides into it and sits down and she sort of like will say hello i'm gulliver she sort of like looks at you and says in a very meek and quiet voice thank you kind sir you know and sort of like sits and she she seems to be sort of like holding everything together as if she's either very cold or um, very nervous uh, anyway matilda um sees it and uh, nods to you gulliver as if to say thank you and she says uh, it is good fortune that i've actually managed to come into a tavern where you uh, were staying a very strange occurrence has happened one that really did um frighten my maid here what 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 happened what well it, what it, type of strange occurrence i'm just going to move you over one because i think you are you sat there now gulliver no i had pulled the i had pulled the chair okay um, so, like, so, so that she was ya. sat there and then I, I pulled this one to where i got you so you, you and, and yeah. do it that way i thought the the handmaiden wouldn't want to sit at the table as if she was oh yes i see what you mean you saw like slightly off to one one corner. yeah yeah mm -hmm. and M Mithil, sorry what did gulliver say what what, what what do you mean strange occurrence what, what, did you did you not come here to see Hengist. No, we we had um, business um, down at the docks. Um, I was trying to reacquaint ourselves with the certain merchant company um, that uh, my father and my family worked with um, some time ago. I'm pleased to say that they are very happy to be reacquainted with us and continue to do business um, alongside us or to rekindle past agreements. However, as we left the harbour um, somewhat late, more late than we had expected, um, darkness had started to descend upon us and that strange mist that lurks on these autumnal nights um, started to hang 
and covering our feet in places. But then I had a very strange feeling, a very strange feeling that I was being, well, we were being watched. You, you, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be traveling the streets, especially after dark. There's, there's all types of robbers and, and, and beggars who yeah. would quite willingly, well, borrow things from you without asking. Fear not, Master Gulliver. I am well prepared for such occurrences. I am not one to hide behind men. I have my own ways of dealing with, shall we say, unwanted encounters. But Bartleby thought he was prepared, and look at his hands now. They're all mangled. Yes, I, I show, guess... Show them your hands, Bartleby. I, yeah, look at my hands. I am sure they have seen very much um, better days. And she says, yes, anyway, um, we had the, un the feeling that... Um, we were being followed. And so we hastened um, toward the um, entrance to the city. And the guard welcomed us in. And when I mentioned it to them, they um, quickly left to see. Apparently there has been some kind of beast roaming in the, the docklands. They were quite keen to um, apprehend it and set off. It was then that we got um, a very um, nervous feeling that as the guards left, well, it became very apparent that we were being watched. What, what from, 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 from behind or? What, oh, yes. What made you feel that you were being watched? Well, the eyes, you see. As we looked back through the gate, into the Docklands, we definitely saw, and she sort of like turns to a maid as if for acknowledgement, and the maid sort of like freak, um, um, rapidly sh nods her head. We definitely saw eyes, two to were be they, exact. Were they, were they yellow? Yes, as yellow as golden sunlight, glowing almost penetrating the, the the fog and bearing down onto myself and my maid Emma here. It was quite unnerving, so much so that just the sheer sight of these eyes, rather lidless or unblinking, staring at us, in some way almost recognizing us we broke our gaze away from them and headed as fast as we could away from the gate um, seeking some kind of safety uh, we saw um, the good um, this good inns warm lights and the sound of entertainment from without from outside and the entertainment from within and so we quickly sought shelter here it is rather lucky that we found such gallant and very protecting people um, here with a somewhat acceptable um, degree of wine. The, the, the cheese is very good here. They, they do like, a, a, like a, a blue one. It, it almost looks like it's... it's it's going mouldy, but it's not. It tastes really, really nice, especially on a nice chunk of bread. Ladies do not eat anything that comes from a cow. The, or goat. The... The... Bartaby, the, the eyes. Lidless again. Didn't that... Didn't the drunk man say that they were lidless? Indeed, and some of the crowd as well. And that is part of the, the myth. Does that mean story. that? Does that mean that he, whatever it is, can't blink? I, 
or it might not need to blink. I, I wait. Was... Should we not make make some? Should we not go go in, out and chase and seek out this creature now? I think you. I think it's probably more important if we if we escorted the the two ladies back to their back to their house to make sure that they were safe. Oh, right, that, right, that's what, right. That's what Hengist would do, surely. And at that, Matilda sort of like pushes her chair back and stands up and Emma, her maid, quickly um, does the same. And she says, yes, accompanying to my house would be um, very um, pleasant and um, it would be very kind of you to take us back there. Um, if only Hengis was here, for he is, he has quite a long lasting stamina that can often take, go throughout the night guarding and being supportive of us. Um, maybe um, you mentioned giving chase. Giving chase to what? Uh, oh, um, well, um, there's a, um, there's a, there's a, there's, problems we're looking into here in Lindo. We're, we're sort of uh, do-gooders, if you will. We try and, if there's problems, we try and solve them. Um, and there's you know, a little case of things happening in the slums I, and, I, I, and I people's once, lives. I, I once killed a giant scorpion by, by jumping on its back and plunging my dagger into its eye. Uh, M Matilda uh, looks at you and smiles and nods. And you, Emma, sort of like goes <laughs> like that, <laughs> not laughing in a a nasty way, but almost like in a shy. Ooh, aren't you the one? And uh, M Matilda says, Matilda sort of like says, if you wish to pursue um, this thing that you are looking for then I, I am happy for one of you to accompany us. And I, I, sorry, for, forgive me. I, I know it was a very traumatic event for the, for the both of you, but is there anything else that you could remember about the, about the encounter that, even if it's something of the slightest of insignificance, that, that might be important? But you, you say you saw the two eyes. Roll your um, influence roll. Great. I'm going to use a point of luck to change that to a 56. Which would then be a standard success. She says, mm. I, I, am, I am happy to answer any questions, but please, we are in a tender state. Hengus would know what to do in a time like this. But and maybe could have actually um, provided you with some um, expertise. Yes, we, we we always we always turn to for Hengis advice when when the situation doesn't require any any thinking. I, I, I think I think it's <laughs> your your questions and rather promptly if if I may ask for it, for we would like to return to our house. I, I just wanted to know whether or not there was anything else that that you could remember about the encounter with the eyes that that you might, even though you might think that it was not important. I think that we have um, told you everything that we know. If you could have, you say that the person looking back at you was was man size or or bigger. Well, we saw eyes, and they were almost like at child's level on the ground. They were not floating high or even looking at my level. Maybe the level of Emma here. Maybe the level of a large um, beast. Um, like, like, like something hunched over. Like, well, like, like, perhaps a leopard, or a, a, a I am cat. unfamiliar with um, uh, the creatures around here. I would say it was at that, uh, at the level as which I described. 
I, I think it's probably best that uh, she is uh, stood up now. Remember, yeah. yeah that that Bart Bartleby and my and myself accompany you back back to your. Hasran, <laughs> <laughs> just go away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Perhaps, my friends, if I, if I if I take them back, like I said earlier, perhaps I could do that. I was, I was more thinking, Hasra, that your talents might be better suited to ensure that we weren't being followed. Oh, M I, 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 Matilda sort of like interrupts you, and she says, "You have obviously um, some things to discuss. I will wait at the door." And she sort of like stands up and sort of like nods at, at Basil uh, as she sort of like walks past. And they, um, they, Emma sort of like tidies up um, her mistress's um, cloak and gently lifts the hood um, over not to disturb uh, Matilda's um, hair while you carry on um, discussing. What, what do you want to do, Hazra? Well, I, I thought the, the idea was for me to watch over the house overnight. But yes, if if you you escort the ladies home, and I will I will be a rear guard as such, just looking to see if you are followed, and then I will stay the night watching yeah. the house. Good, good idea. Uh, yes. Gulliver's going to stand up and he's going to say, C "Come on, come on, Bartleby, we're we're guards." Okay, so um, just so I know, so I know that you're accompanying Matilda back up to her house and then Hasra, you're checking if, if you're followed at all, if anybody's yeah. followed there. And I'm going to give like a 30 second um, yeah. lead. Yeah. And then you're going to then stay at the house, is that? Is mm. that stay, okay. well, I want a good vantage point around the house so I can see as much of the house as I can. Yeah, and what about, um, what's Gulliver and Bartleby going to do? once you've arrived at the house um gulliver is in two minds it depends on on how the house is and whether or not he can he can gain access to it he wouldn't mind a um a closer look um inside the house so maybe um with um with bartleby's help he's going to try to um use a use a spell to to get in as in um he wants to he wants to use a, a combination of um, of magic using both his projection of sight and hearing mm. to to see whether or not he can see more within the maybe my friend why not just simply ask for a um a nightcap after walking them home at this cold evening obviously uh, it's not going to be um acceptable for matilda to have it's not the lady thing to do. I mean, it's obvious that she's quite impressed with somebody. In, in the servants' court, <sighs> perhaps. Mm. <laughs> okay, then. So, um, Hazra, you roll me your perception roll um, uh, to see whether or not any you see anybody um, or anything following the party. Let's do that bit first. Okay, so you sort of like all set off and as you go through the streets, um, it's interesting because the previous nights um, or, well, yes, the last night, because uh, the most of the population is not, um, do not know about Rose's um, death um, at all. Um, the, um, the, the lights, um, a lot of people seem to be leaving lights on, leaving candles burning. And you do notice that there's quite an increase in the regularity of the um, guards, the city guards walking around, two of them at a time, um, in their, um, their tunics. And almost like um, nodding and ca um, carefully inspecting passerbys, you know, and... They they obviously they seem to recognise uh, Matilda, and they don't seem to um, stop her. And because they're not they're not stopping her, they sort of like understand that Bartleby and Gulliver, you're probably part of her entourage um, a, as you um, come up. Now, if you remember the um, the residence, Matilda's residence is quite a large mansion that is sort of like set back from the road and so there's a, a part of um, open ground um, leading up to it so there's sort of like the 
the wrought iron gates at the front and there's um, people on guard there they don't look like guards they look more like um, servants and um, as you sort of like pass through um, Bartleby and Gulliver with Matilda and Emma uh, Matilda sort of like um, turns to the um, people on the gardens and says um, he, or they, they sort of like say well, welcome home my lady and she, she sort of says, um, yes, you, you may um, lock the g gates as soon as my companions here leave. And they sort of say, yes, my lady, of course, not a problem. As, as we walk up towards, as we're walking up towards the house, uh, how is it, is it, uh, I suppose that there's, there's several windows at the front. Uh, yeah. Does it look like they're all lit or does well, it look no, like... Well, no, I mean, there, there's a central part of the house and two wings Mm. off off either side and i mean obviously there's rooms that there's no lights from and but the the sort of like the entrance of it is well lit and it, even as you approach you can see um that there's people moving around inside it's not deserted at all and there's two sort of like torch brackets either side of the um front door with flaming brands on um it doesn't look like they're they it looks like they have plenty of oil to spare you know that they're, they're not sort of like worried about the electric bill here and there seems to be various lights on but obviously um the whole place is not lit up um probably the major sort of like um areas um the front door and the front sort of like court um entrance hall the atrium is very well lit and it's almost as if somebody must be sort of like stood inside watching and waiting because as uh, Matilda, Matilda doesn't break her stride she just walks towards the door and as if they're automatic doors just as she gets close they open as if there's and you can see that there's servants inside that have opened it and uh, there's a gentleman in there who, who sort of like says welcome home my lady and matilda comes in and she's just sort of like undoes her cloak and sort of like starts to take it off her shoulders and all of a sudden you notice that there's a a maid to to, to take it um off and she turns to emma and she says i will not be needing you emma for the rest of the evening you may retire and she now turns uh, to Gulliver and Bartby, who are sort of like at the doorway, because, of course, you haven't mm. uh, been invited in at all. And she she sort of like um, turns to you and she says, my thanks, kind sirs. I felt very safe walking through the streets with you both by my side, as did Emma, I imagine she says just looking at you Gulliver would you, would you like us to check to make sure that your 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 house is secure before we depart or do you have people to do that for you she she sort of like looks quite um shocked uh, as if you would suggest that a house is not secure and she says my house is fine thank you master Gulliver thank you once again for escorting us um, back safely. And she turns to one of the um, the um, butlers and she says, please make sure you communicate our, my gratitude to these um, fine um, young men. And she, he sort of like goes, hey, yes, my lady. And she's just sort of like nods politely to you with a kind of a smile and nod of the head and so like turns round with a whistle, rustle of petticoats and um, goes in and um, the, the butler, um, the, the man who had opened the door, greeted her sort of like um, comes out and um, produces a very posh um, velvet um, money purse um, all, all tied up and said says to you both um the lady matilda would like to um express her gratitude to you um, not only in words but in um coinage and he's sort of like holding it by the top and sort of like ho ho holds out um the purse bag for you 
Oh, thank you very much. Good if I reach out for it. And as you reach out, he just drops it and into your um, hand. You you figure there's about twenty or f twenty to thirty um, silver coins in there from from the um, um, weight of it. And she, he sort of says, um, "The pleasure was all hers, I am sure." And he sort of like nods um, to you, and the the door sort of like. Uh, as you sat on the doorway does sort of like close and you're sort of like right in sort of like in front of your nose this sort of what mm. did, did did he just insult us about to be when he when he said the pleasure was all hers oh. i don't think that was an insult but hazard's pretty good at insults maybe we should ask him Let's move to um, Hazra since we mentioned him. So you've arrived in the general area. There was nobody you can see. You probably think the best vantage point to actually see um, in the house without going in th over the railings is probably to find some kind of vantage point. So if you roll your survival skill, um, we can f see how good you are at finding a, a suitable position. Certainly. Yeah, and, and you you find um, that off to one side, there's quite an old um, oak type tree that's very sturdy and looks like it's been there for quite a while. The, the leaves, because it's coming into winter, uh, a lot of them have fallen and are on the ground around, but there, there's still um, adequate cover um, to sort of like climb up in the tree and sort of like rest in um, a you know like a, a delve or connection of um two yeah, the bow of the uh, tree, tree. yeah, yeah. um you, you'll probably have to um be careful with your um spear while you're up there um but you can probably get it up into the bow and, and maybe sort of like cradle it um somehow um mm. just to let you know i'm going to use your skill level uh, your roll of 17 um to to check um yeah. if, whether or not i see you um if anybody was to pass oh. so obviously if you got 64 it'd be so special uh, it, really? yeah, yeah. <laughs> rather than the, the seven <laughs> so so yeah so you're sort of like um uh, create, you... I'm like I'm like I'm like a jaguar laying on the branch of a tree, just mm. just watching and the building. And yeah, so I'm there crouching. Okay, um, so we you're sort of like up in the tree now. Um, so we'll move back to um, Bartleby and Gulliver. You're sort so, of like so stood at the porch. Porch. So as we're, uh, about, um, Gulliver's going. She has a porch. Um, yeah. Just I I just want to. Um, show you um what the entrance um would have looked like can you see that no yeah, very posh very nice uh, yeah so so these this is where that the door was going into and this is the entrance hall and you can see that there's a wing coming off here and a wing coming off there you do realise if they're evil, this is our new base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to move in. Yeah. <laughs> Gull Gulliver's going to turn to Bartaby and he's going to say, Bartaby, do you have any wine on you? Any any wine? Wine, yes. Or or maybe something a bit stronger. I think I might have an oil flask somewhere around here, unless I left that in with my... Oh, uh, yeah, I think that's in my room. I, I, I was thinking that may, may, maybe we could... Maybe we could get the the guards on the on the at the entrance to to maybe open up into a, into a bit of discussion and maybe find out where where, where the where the S grind uh, servants actually, yeah actually actually came from because ser servants are, are normally going to be more open and I thought maybe if we offer them some some wine and you know but I don't think a flask of oil is really going to do it. No, maybe, I wouldn't want to drink that. Um... Maybe you could. Maybe you could offer to to give them Amriel's blessing and and start them in conversation about. Um, Bartby and Gulliver, just just roll your perceptions. You see, Hasra 
<laughs> so just I for, to take. Just oh no, for, do I get it at 99? Um, yeah, it's 96 or above. And and then uh, unless yeah. if you're if you're 100, what's your skill? 61. Oh yes. Yeah, so you like you a get a fumble is anything between 96 and 100 all the time. It's just that if you if you've got a skill of 100 it's not 96 to 100 it's 99 to 100 do i get to put a tick in my little box though and get one percent on it yeah what oh cool yeah um so you sort of like um are, are both sort of like um stood there um having this um conversation sort of like at, in the porch and you you do hear a rather rather loud rattle of the door as if that somebody sort of like is locking it and you know but it, it's almost like done on purpose as if to make a loud uh, noise and you you do notice that um you're not too sure but you sort of like you, something catches you out the corner of your eye and look to one of the side windows and you notice um you're not too sure but it, you it's almost as if somebody sort of like quickly got out the way as as you turned it and looked perhaps we should perhaps we should start heading towards the entrance and and decide what we're going to be doing out of yeah there. let's let's go find where Hazard went off to i want to if he's going to be out all night i want to give him uh amriel's blessing are, are you going to try to talk to the the servants at the gate um how, well do you think they're going to really share secrets with a the priest well <laughs> they might trust you a little bit more than me People you're, you're, you're about you're about halfway to the um gate at the moment i'll, I'll wave uh to the the servants then and say uh, hello yeah and as and friendly that, as i can yeah and uh, as you sort of like um get closer um they sort of like step to one side and they they open half of the gate um remembering their their orders um from matilda and they they sort of like um as you get by you say hello it says that they sort of like um says, says uh, good evening sirs yes and um, pleasant pleasant journey back to your abodes oh don't we're no sirs don't 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 call us sirs we, we were just helping it's going to be a cold night tonight i can feel it i can always feel it in my leg when it's going to be really really cold it, fear not, we have quarters within the house. As soon as we have locked up the gate, we will be retiring as well, kind sirs. My, wow. My, my, my friend here is, is, a, is a priest of Amriel. W would you like her blessing before, before we leave? Uh, we, we are um, fine, thank you. Of course, they're they're of course Gulliver. They're fine. I mean, working for the Grimes must be a dream. A wonderful quarters, yeah. It will be once we are retired out of this chill air. I don't think they will speak to us. I'm just gonna glare at Gulliver. <laughs> oh right. If what if you, say? I I think I I'm not too sure whether or not you want to influence them um in which case it would need a role or whether or not you're trying to deceive them um even to believing something can you see so i i'm, I'm a bit puzzled which role you want to do i would say it's deceit because we're tr I, I my objective was kind of trying to trick them to start talking about their their job like if if they disagreed with my statement um would you like a deceit role yes yes by all means Barlaby suggestion. Is that, oh, nice. Yeah, but it's it's opposed. It's, um, it's, yeah. it's 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 Herculean and it's opposed. I just I didn't think I'd succeed on my end. So. So what what are you trying to deceive them into believing? I that I'm just asking if they like their employer um, to to try and test whether they they enjoy working for the Grimes. Yeah, they um, they're quite happy with their employment. They seem to be more 
um, concerned about following Matilda's um, orders and almost like not out of fear, but more out of uh, respect. It's more that they, they sort of like want to, they, they, they don't have a bad word um, to say about Matilda at all. You know, and even when you ask them about, you know, is she somebody nice to work for, something like that, they're, they're very sort of like to the point and there's no hesitation or anything like that um, in their voice. Um, if, if Gulliver, if you want to roll an insight roll, you can see whether or not they're um, lying if Bartleby's doing the deceiving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, and they, they seem to be really um, pleasant. And um, okay. in the end, you sort of like um, leave and you, they close the, the gate. Um, does Bartleby and Gulliver just roll your perceptions? I just want to see whether or not you see um, um, Hazra. Oh, um, I do. Bartleby, you, you don't see um, at all. But Gulliver, you probably sort of like point him out. Uh, as he's Yoo as he's laid like a jaguar <laughs> with, with so imagine a branch his his arms and lay and legs are sort of like over both sides of it and just sort of like dangling it's like a, a, sleep. a, a sleeping <gasps> jaguar up there. and he, he sort of like looks like he's li lying on a branch and it looks like he's settled in for the uh, night. Um, so, so 17 was a really, really bad roll when it comes down to it. But it was good enough for yeah. to deceive Bartleby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. So it's a really, really bad roll then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, so Hazra, you're going to stay um, keeping an eye on the house all night. Um, Bartleby and Gulliver, what's going to be your course of action for the evening i i was hoping to uh use some miracles on hazra before going back to my temple i presume unless gulliver had a plan but the key part for me was i wanted to do some miracle work before i leave hazra okay so you you can do um hazra you would have to come down from your um mm -hmm. hiding place yeah you know so yeah you you can um it's uh um so near the Near the actual um, mansion, is there anywhere that's sort of like off the main thoroughfare? That but basically what I want to try to do, I want to try to, um, not without letting Hazra know this, but I want to find somewhere off the main thoroughfare and I want to mark an area with my alarm spell. And then I want to tell um Hazra that if he if he gets into trouble during the night or if he needs our help to go down there and whisper my name. Yeah, I mean that that's and not not the fact that whispering my name is I'm gonna hear it, but as he goes down there it's going to set off my alarm spell and even if I'm gonna be asleep, which I am going to be, um mm. I will wake up and, and know that he needs help. That, that's absolutely I was fine. It, I wasn't doing a way that Hazra doesn't know that there's magic involved, as in going mm. across my alarm spell. He just thinks that he's going somewhere to say my name. and Because you just you threw the door at that place. Yeah, and that, that's absolutely fine. That, um, um, what what well, miracles have been put on to Hazra? Well, just before he does that, um, when Hazra comes down, he'll be like, how, how did you see me? How do you know I was here? I was, I was hidden very well. Who saw me? I, I I saw your I saw the your robes flying in uh, waggling in the in the wind. I thought oh. it was some type of bird, and when when I looked up, I thought that's a big beak, but it wasn't. It was your spear. Ah, right. Well, <laughs> if when I go back into the tree, I will have to find a more a, a more advantageous hiding point than that. Did you see? An, did you see anybody following uh, Melissa? No, no, no. Matilda. It's all, all, Matilda. Every, everything was clear. Yeah, I was able to no, follow no, you back to this. Yellow eyes. Nothing yellow with yellow eyes. I would have, I would have soon told you. I'd be like yellow eyes. Okay, nice. okay so um, what miracles are, are Bartleby um, casting? 
The first is Perseverance, and then the second would be just a folk magic prayer of protection. Yeah, okay then. So you can cast those. That That's not an issue, and they'll both be um, on Hazra. Um, Hazra, would you like to roll your survival roll again? I certainly would, please, sir. Were you wanting me to roll for those it. miracle work? No, or? no, there, there's okay. no there's no need. Cool. Oh, my, it's my star in it. It's there. Thank you. Oh, shut the front door. Oh, it's a critical moment. It's that's a critical. I'll, I'll live with it. Yeah, and, and as um, Hasra climbs up into the tree with probably with Amriel's magic um, uh, on him, he he, he slowly um, disappears and is uh, as he lays a cr down across um, a rather more... No, no, it, I've just fallen down to the other side of the tree. Yeah. You can't see me. And then uh, Bartaby and Gulliver, are you planning on um, just going back to your appropriate places? G G Gulliver's plan now is to um, he is to go back um, to the um, the the, the um, Kraken um, school of the Kraken. Uh, where he wants to, he wants to get some sleep, safe in the knowledge that if Hazra gets into trouble, yeah. he's he's going to. And then tomorrow morning, first thing before meeting uh, back up with them, he wants to go and see um, Mistress Duncan um, to see what um, to see what she wants to speak to him about the um, the deaths. Okay, brilliant. And Bartleby, um, Bartleby will go back to his temple, confident that. Um, the hazard's going to be safe with a lot of energy and then instead of he'll go in the morning to bring breakfast to hazard okay tree, hopefully that's cool okay so it's half past um so that seems to be an appropriate moment to um take a break um if you're watching the stream then we will we're going to take a quick 10 minute break and then we will be back so please do get up stretch your legs go and get yourself a drink and we will be back in 10 minutes don't go i will run an advert by the way so keep mm. keep around and watch Strike that to. and do this one chunk
Okay, and uh, yeah, we are back, um, refreshed and still eating, but keen to uh, move on. So I'm going to move straight up to Hazra because you are cleverly dis um, camouflaged. I think is probably the best word um, in a uh, on a, in a neighbouring uh, in a neighbouring um, tree, and the first thing that you notice is that. You sort of like see the house um, in front of you slowly get put to rest, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah, the, the lights going out. Yeah, so the first things that are put out, somebody comes out and puts metal caps over the, um, f the torches outside and leaves them on it in order to keep it dry if it rains or something. But of course, it snubs out the flame. And you notice that the, the bottom... Um, lights are slowly um, turned out until there's only um, a couple of um, lights up on the um, second floor. There seems to be no lights in the middle of the house, but as you look at it, um, there seems to be eventually one light left on in the, the left-hand wing and a couple in the right hand wing so not in the major sort of like center part of the house but one in yep. the left and a couple in the right mm -hmm. um and then eventually shortly after about you think shortly after midnight uh, the moon's come out it's quite full and then um you see that sort of like beaming down and you you start to get the feeling that you know you've been up here for quite a while and you regularly adjust yourself um to stop your um uh, muscles um going into cramp however yeah. this is longer than a normal watch um to get right the way through the night so you will have to make for me um an oh, endurance oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, endurance roll I'll do it now for you. That'd be great. Would, would that perseverance <laughs> there help for him? Um, yeah, I need to know whether or not it it needs to take effect. Um, because I think mm. it um, the target will not receive another level of uh, fatigue. So he's actually made his role. So he doesn't need to use that. To, mm -hmm. So the spell is still active on him. If he had... of missed it Failed. it would have used up it would yeah. have used Gosh, that yeah. up yeah it's like you get out of free jail yeah God. exactly um but I follow. but you're you're quite um used to being hugging a tree I branch I'm, I'm, I'm used to watching game <laughs> yeah like adjusting my body to, to keep the circulation going just yeah. gently and it's probably um some time after midnight, um, the lights, all the lights um, in the house are, have gone off and everything is very quiet. There, there's not even the sound of movement on the streets or anything like that. Um, maybe the odd screech of an owl or, you know, the, a bat flying past. But apart from that, um, the night on the on the gentry hill is is quite calm and almost like serene and you you almost like, like yeah but you you almost like feel a lot more comfortable in it apart from the lack of sounds because you're used to being out in the wilderness with, i like to hear crickets <laughs> yeah crawling and, around and it seems very um quiet you know just like i said maybe a screech of a barn owl as it flies across or something like that and but there seems to be no movement um of people there seems to be no guards walking around which is quite normal for gentry hill you know the gentry don't want guards walking around when they're you know going between houses um on late night calls and it's it's some time after midnight and the the moon has crawled across the sky and is obviously reached its apex and is started to move on its downward journey towards the horizon and could you roll for me a perception check perception. first uh. <laughs> 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 Could, 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 could I can hear it? 
because I've been here so long and I'm under this string. I want to spread my pillow a little bit. <laughs> um, I'd like you to point a look on that. Yeah. Uh, and just to let you know, um, Gulliver and I, Chuggerwook and I, had a, an interesting discussion whether or not you should be able to use luck to remove a fumble or not. Fumble. And we actually came up to with this suggestion is that you can actually use luck to cheat death if you think about it. Because yeah, it's if yeah. you took a, a major wound... You can knock it down. Don't do a serious. So we we thought it's fine to undo uh, uh, fumble. So yes, and, and put it to a critical. That's all. Uh, yeah, but by, like, oh, oh, by, yeah. yeah, by all means. <laughs> and if this comes up ninety nine, I will literally wet myself. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm rejecting it. You have to it. prove it there one stream. Yeah, yeah. You have to do that. Ninety nine. I'm sure you <laughs> Can't I just revert it to a zero? No. no. <laughs> oh, I have to re-roll it? Yes. Oh, crap. How can you get a zero when it's one, zero, zero? It would be... It'd be double oh one. No, it da -da. Not. That's not one. Con 99. <laughs> <laughs> I told you if I revert it, I from, get a one. From the sublime <laughs> to the ridiculous. <laughs> Welcome to my world. And, and the question <laughs> is, why could you have done that the first time? No. no. And, uh, I, was, I was just warming up. <laughs> oh, do, do, do I still put a tick in the box? The, for the fumble, yes. I don't oh, know. Thank you. Um, we he, could have it that if, if you use a point of luck, then you don't get the tick. Shut up. Uh, yeah, Shut I don't up. I'm not. For 1%, it's not really worth Okay, then. Well, I've just moved to 120, so I'm happy with that. So you sort of like, um, in the darkness, you know, because there's hardly any sound uh, at all, you hear from far away in the house, and it's almost as if because it's so quiet, it's almost like amplified the sound. And you actually hear in the distance coming from the house what appears to sound like um, um, the scream um, of um, a young lady. Um, it's very high pitch and it's very shrill and it, it almost like as if there's just letting it out um, straight away. And it's, it's short, sharp, and incredibly loud. Um, yeah, what would you like to do? As soon as I hear that, I want to be down out of the tree and running to where Gulliver told me to run. Okay, then. To... So roll your athletics or acrobatics, whichever yep. one. Athletics. Yeah, so you skip out of the tree and go over to the um, the the place where Gulliver um, uh, I told you to whisper his name. And you, you whisper you, your name, Gulliver, so you hear um um Hazra because of your alarm spell you you sort of like don't hear him you the alarm spells triggered as yeah, soon so the alarm as spells trigger, so all of a sudden the hairs on the back of Gulliver's neck just sort of like even though he's asleep they just sort of like all, all of a sudden stand up and yeah. he knows that Hazra is 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 in trouble yeah and Hazra's there going Gulliver Gulliver, like this. <laughs> Gulliver, Gulliver. You know, and um, Hazra, you sort of like turn round and see the house and you notice that um, uh, lights are being lit um, it, would, it in the house. Would Gulliver know, sorry, would Gulliver, would Hazra know where the servant's entrance would be in this house? He's been here before, hasn't he? You went in the front door. In the front. front. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, he knows, he knows the front door's been locked. I'm familiar with no, I'm not the house layout. It's, so, know, yeah, so Hasra, what, what's... types of shit, but that's about it. Um, Hasra, once he's done what Gulliver asked him to do, will then run to the front door and start banging on the front okay, door. Okay, so the first thing you need to get past is the locked gates. Uh, oh, outside the gate, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so you have a choice. Um, you can, I well, three choices you can have. You can either just charge it and try to use your brawn just to try to burst through the lock. You okay. can pick the lock um, if you wish, or you can attempt to climb over 
As, as you will do, his, his instinct of climbing over the fence. Okay, over then. The wall. So that would be your athletics, wouldn't it? Yes. So roll away. <gasps> Using my spear to pole vault over them. <laughs> yeah, so you sort of like manage to sort of like um, hurdle over the, um, or pull yourself up and your spear mm. as well over the um, fence and you start running towards the house. And um, Gulliver, what uh, what would you like to be doing? Um, so as soon as Gulliver sort of like wakes up, um, how far from the um, Order of the Kraken's halls is the, um, the the hill. I just need to sort of like know just for um, a spell um, range. So, um, so I think the scale on this map is actually... Oh, no, it's not. Um, what, what are the options? All right, so... Um, if I had it going for 7,500 metres... That would be fine. That's 7,000. That, that's like seven kilometres. Right. OK, what about um, 1,500 metres? Well, that... One that's th a mile. That, yeah, that, that's like... that's a, a 1,000 metres is a kilometre. Um, right. And one kilometre is how... Is it 0. 0.8? Um, hang on, I've got it here. Two thirds of a mile. Yeah, um, yeah, it's one kilometre is 0. 0.621 of a mile. So it's within a mile. So one kilometre will do it. Okay, so I need five points of shaping for, for that. Uh, I need one point of shaping to combine two spells. So that's six points of shaping. So I've got a total of... Um, Okay, so I'm going to use. Um, Hang on, tell, tell just back a bit, so I know what you. So what? Tell, tell me what spells you you're going to. Okay, so I'm I'm going to um, in the in in the in my little dorm room that I have. I'm going to immediately combine two spells. I'm going to combine this um, the casting of project sight. Yeah. Project hearing. Okay, so you're going to mold them together. And so I'm going to combine both spells together, and then I want to be able to sustain them and travel to where the um, the where Hasra is. So I need um, one point of shaping to combine two spells. Okay, then. So what? What's... Uh, I need. I'll use one. I I, I won't use anything for. Because it's fifteen minutes, and I can travel. Is pretty your quick. what's your shaping skill? My shaping is eight, but I want to I want to leave shaping. Uh, what, what's your what's your shaping skill? My shaping skill is seventy five. Seventy five. I'm just typing it into my um my calculus thing, and your intelligence is. My intelligence. Yeah. Fourteen. And your power. Oh, right, 15. 15. Okay, then, yeah. So you combine... What is intelligence? It, it, it just shows me um, it, to right. do with things like... So how many spells are you doing? Two spells together? Two spells, yeah. Duration, 15 minutes? Yeah. Um, you're just and going main. for... You're going for pow power in rounds for your yeah. duration, yeah? Um, so you're no not... Power in minutes. Yeah. Um, so you're, yeah. you're not doing anything. Magnitude is going to be what? One. Uh, one. Okay, then. let me just change that down. Range is... Is going to be 100 metres times power. Yeah, got yeah. So that's going to be six points of shaping. Um, yeah, um, correct. Which is going to leave me with two points. Um, yeah, you've got three points... According to this, you'll have three points. Yeah. Oh, t a target. One target. Yeah. 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 Cheer, everybody watching, we have all the math on this channel. Yeah. yeah. Spell casting is so complicated when you start playing it. So you've got two spells, 15 mm -hmm. minutes. Um, you're not doing any more. Um, it's going to be in 
seconds for your duration and mm -hmm. yeah okay then so and, and i want to take i want to take, so it's going to basically cost me two powerpoints i believe isn't it um yeah it's just your powerpoints for each spell yeah so it's going to cost me two powerpoints have i actually gained any powerpoints back yet did this happen you've probably um bartleby will get all your magic points back um Gulliver, you'll get half of your missing ones back because okay, so I was uh, so I was um, six missing. So that that's going to put me on that's going to put me on twelve. It's going to put me back down to ten. Okay, I want to take minutes to cast these two spells. Okay, so that'll be um, easy then. Yeah, but uh, it's not. It's going to be standard because I'm combining two spells. Oh, yes. Got it you. increases the um, it's going to increase the difficulty um, as well. Okay, then. So, and um, and then are you look? Are you then moving your sight? And then I'm then moving because I, it takes me it takes me time to move it. But I'm then going to go as quick as I can up towards the um, the house. Okay, then. So, so I will must must skill well now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm well in. Okay, then. Cool. Got Forty out of ninety nine. Okay, then. So how long would that take you to cast? Well, minutes to cast. Yeah, so it's going so to... So I don't know how long minutes is. We've never really sort of like... No, it's, a, it's just like a one minute. That That's okay. what it is, rather than one second within the six-second round when you do it turns, etc. So, okay. okay. That, and, so. Then, and then as far as how quickly I can... Um, I'm just going to... I'm just going to submit this to see how quickly I can move. Um. Concentration is required for two aspects of the spell, moving the astral perception. Duh, duh. Relative speaking, the sense moves quite slowly with a maximum speed of 10 times the spell's intensity in kilometers per hour. Yeah. Okay, so the intensity is 10. 10 so you're doing 10 kilometers per hour so therefore it would take you um six minutes to get there if we say it's a kilometer right yeah is that right yeah um because it'll be one kilometer in 60 minutes um you would do 10 kilometers in 60 minutes so therefore if it's mm. half of that then that's it but it's going to be faster than me actually traveling there yeah yeah. either by foot or finding a yeah has was just done another athletics role is that for something that <laughs> you mean i'm saying that for later so i'll leave it yeah by <laughs> okay so yeah so you cast that spell then so you're now moving your astral um self um through the through the streets and probably going the long way round as well because rather than over things because you wouldn't actually necessarily know that direction so gulliver you're sort of like moving your um can, can i just say there. it's 10 times the speed intensity and what was your um intensity 10 so that's 100 isn't it, uh, it what's your intensity sorry my intensity is 10 yeah, so it'd be a hundred, wouldn't it? Ten times ten is a hundred. Um, I thought it moved one kilometer with a maximum speed of ten. Oh, maximum speed of ten times. Yeah, yeah ten times the spell's intensity in kilometers per hour. So hundred kilometers an hour. All oh, right. So uh, ten times the spell intensity. So the intensity is ten. So it's ten. So All it's right. Yeah. Times, so it's hundred hundred kilometers an hour is doing. So that's going to be what, sixty seconds. Yeah. Here, damn it. So oh, you'll, you'll get there um, in in a, in a minute, uh, in mm. sort of like a very quick time. Okay then, so while that's all casting, we'll nip back to Hazra. Hazra, what's going to be, you're now over the gate and you're running towards the door. Mm. But Hazra's primary thing is, I, I, I've, I've heard the scream, I've done what Gulliver said, as soon as anything happened. Uh, my priority is there's some in distress in this house. I'm running straight to the front door. I'm banging like like a, like a bear on this front door. I'm like, hello, help, 
Is anybody, is everybody all right in there? I get to scream. Yeah, so roll, roll your brawn roll to let's see how hard you're actually um, banging, whether or not anybody sort of like uh, hears you. So you start to um, bang um, on this door. And as you start banging, Gulliver, your projected self um, will appear um, at, at the location. So you get um, up to the front door just as, because uh, it'll take sort of like um, the minute for, um, Hasra to get there so you're now there in um, projected um, sense did you say you got visual and sound I've got I've got sight and hearing yes yeah so you can hear um, um, Hasra sort of like banging uh, on the door and okay. you um, that you can um, both you make um, perception checks for me I'm on fire uh, tonight is- is my uh, I I just can't I just let me because I think my perception is now my spell. Are you with me? I, I think it changes. I don't know whether or not it's my actual perception or whether or not it's the um, the spell's perception. Let me just quickly. Can no longer use it as his physical body. But no. Will be the um. Per- uh, attempt a perception check with the projected sense. Con- concentration is required for two aspects of the spell. Moving that sort of uh, attempting a perception check with the projected sense. Relatively speaking, the sense of that doesn't make any sense. Right. Okay. No, it okay. means that um, he has to concentrate. Oh, I understand. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to use my own because it's simplest. I'm going to use a point of luck to take that to an eight. Okay, then. and that still won't be a critical, won't it? No. Um, yeah. So you you can both Hazra and Gulliver's projected self um, can hear. There seems to be um, a lot of movement um, inside. There seems to be um, people um, um, clattering uh, around as if they're moving around. You you can also hear um, um, what seems to be call, um, sort of like sobbing. Um, as well, and, and oh, yeah. do, do I get a general sense of which direction it's coming from? Oh, within the house, yeah, it's definitely from uh, within the house, and from has... the wings or from the the back of it, or no, it seems that they're moving behind the door. You won't be able right. to sort of like hear uh, either side of the wings. It just seems to be people moving around in the atrium um, behind okay. the doors. Okay. Yeah, so Hasra, you're sort of like um, banging on it and saying, let me in. I heard uh, somebody scream. Um, uh, let me in. wants to start moving round the outside of the house. Okay, um, so, yeah, do you wish to go um, left? Left, yeah. Or right? Left. And based on just sheer luck? Just, yeah, that, that's the way I would go. I would move around it clockwise. <laughs> okay, then. Because so, right is always wrong. Yeah, so you, you sort of, like, head off um, going round um, the house. I can, uh, roll a, I can roll a dice if no, you want. No, no, that, that's absolutely fine. Um, you sort of, like, head off clockwise um, round the house, um, which, which is fine. Um yeah, so Hasra, you're still at this door. What would you like I'm, to do? I'm still banging away. I'm rattling the door. I mean, let me in. I heard somebody scream for help. Yeah, okay. Then. So you um, carry on and banging in and um, screaming to um, l- let you in. City uh, guard! Uh, oh, are you saying that? Oh. Uh, yes. I mean, they, it's up to you. I, I, and uh, no, no, I can't lie. I'm rubbish at the light. No, no. Okay, so you're, you're sort of like um, yep. banging uh, on the gate. I wouldn't do that. No. Um, part of me, you're sleeping. You're fast asleep. I know. Basking oh, in, wonderful. basking Best in, sleep yeah. ever. Unreal's life. Basking in the moonlight, and um, your projected sense um, go, goes round um, the um, side of the house. I'm going to send you a message on Discord. You look lovely tonight. I like your eyes. <laughs> yes. The yellow and little. Yellow. Your eyes remind me of your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> your <Urine> eyes. <laughs> I remember one winter 
When I saw two eyes like yours. <gasps> Inwells has got a custom status. Has he? Yeah. On Discord. You've all got a custom status. What's it say? Um, Chugglewugger says the reliable one. Um, yeah. Mr. Pickle says made of failed dreams, which is very oh. deep. And... Oh. <laughs> I, 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 I don't have one. Did you get you one? I haven't set one then. No, I felt disappointed. Mine's... Oh, Sassy so Sasquatch is this playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Yeah. <gasps> uh, mind, uh, mind says, um, wahoo, custom status. Ah. Um, right, yeah, um, you've got that message, Gulliver. Okay. I want to go in. Say again, sir. I want to go through that. Yeah, so you, uh, I presume there, can your projectors sense levitate up then? Oh, oh, sorry. It's, oh, it's on, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I'm going to, um, I'm going to look around see whether or not I can see anything else. Maybe back towards where the wall is. Okay. Is then. the wall close or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, there seems to be some ground. Um, roll a perception um, check. Um, this is going to be quite difficult because it's dark. And... I laugh in the face of difficulty. <laughs> well, yeah, no, not this time. Uh, and it laughs back. Do you, do, yeah. <laughs> do you wish to? Um... No, thank you. Okay, then. So you sort of like have a look um, round and you, you can't sort of like um, see um, anything in the darkness and can I get my can I get my bearings of if if I was to go straight over the wall and and head as the crow flies would I be heading towards the docks further no, into um, the... are you on the Lindo map yeah yeah um you would be heading for this wall so right. I'm, okay. I'm on okay. the yeah this yeah yeah yeah, so the outer wall of Lindo. Yeah, you wouldn't be heading um, here or yeah. here or anything. All right, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so yours does that, and um, Hasra, or, or, or you hear um, it, yeah, the the sorry. key, um, the uh, the key, sort of like um, rattling, and um, the door is open um, just a, a little way as one of the manservants that you've seen before, who seems to be dressed in a sort of like a nightshirt you know, with a, a wee wheelie winkle hat on mm. and carrying um, what appears to be a, a candle on a brass um, handle, holding it up so it's n not um, um, interfering with um, the, the light at all. This, this um, servant recognises you from when you were last um, here, not yes. not today, but no, um, he, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, and, and so, sort of like uh, says... Can, can, can I help you? Yes, yes, man. I was I was passing by the gates on my way to see my friend, and, and I heard a scream come from this house. And I know we've been I've been here before, so it's very concerned about. The, is it your lady Matilda? Uh, uh, just okay. Well, well, your um, influence. Well, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's Herculean. It's hard. <laughs> no, it's hard. <laughs> I'll use a point of luck. <laughs> do you wish to use a point of luck? <laughs> do you know what I should do, really, shouldn't I? But no, I won't. Um, I'm not going to push it. <laughs> yeah, see, the, he sort of, like, recognises you in your pyjamas and sort of, like, looks as his as well, and it looks like you're still, <laughs> you're still sort of, like... Pyjama pals. Uh, so, so, yeah, <laughs> some kind of recognition um um thing and sort of like um uh, he sort of like remembers you and sort of like says come, come in mr hasra there, there has been an awful um uh, an awful well killing in 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 the the left hand wing the the western wing of the um the house no who, yes who, who, who resides who resides in the left hand wing well um lady matilda's um no. lady oh. matilda's um Father, <gasps> take me there now. Let me let me see. Let me see the dead bodies. Let me I see the dead bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I live, I live to see the bodies. Uh, let me it, see it's... the bodies so I can dip my spirit in the blood and absorb its soul. <laughs> and you sort of, he sort of yeah. like brings you in and sort of like 
um, sort of like um, takes you across the um, the atrium and sort of like bits of tw twig fall off you and he sort of like looks and sort of like thinks where's all these leaves coming from I am one from? with nature and um, as you sort of like go up the um, the, the main stairwell um, you notice that Matilda comes from the opposite wing um, so the, the right hand um, wing and she sort of like crosses um, over and she's sort of like hurriedly putting on some kind of robe you know and you notice that she's got a hair all plaited and she she suddenly sort of like it looks quite um startled to see you sort of like there and she sort of like pulls her um robe slightly tighter around her her, her neck and says mr hazra you have come at a, a most opportune time please follow me I, I will admit to my apologies. I was on my way to see your friend. This is not Angus. a time for talking. She, okay, she snaps at you and says, follow me Sorry, now. Sorry, ma'am. And she's, the way. yeah. Um, just, uh, you can roll your courtesy skill if you wish to well, see I'm how sure. grateful you are. I don't have a courtesy No, it's skill. professional skill. Oh, so in which, in which case, just roll your... Um, Dance. In, in Dance. <laughs> just roll your influence again. Oh, God, no. Oh, oh God, yes. <laughs> and she, she, she sort of, like, accepts your sort of, like, kind. Can you, that was a hard roll, by the way, so you, you, oh. it's the best one you can possibly do. <laughs> well, actually, a 13 would have been about... Hi, Darth, how you do? Um, Hi, Darth. Uh, and then he, they, so she sort of, like, hurries past you and um, you sort of, like, follow, and she takes you up into the... The, the left wing of the, the house and sort of like comes around and sort of like there's a, a whole load of um, servants gathered around and there's a, a, a rather plump old elderly lady sort of like sat, sat down with um, a sobbing um, 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 woman, a maid um, and she you notice that there's um as matilda leads the way the the throng of people sort of like separate and sort of like um bow their heads as she just sort of like comes into what appears to be a really large um room it has a, a wonderful four poster bed in it and various um, mahogany um, furniture. Everything looks so very old, but very um, as if it was crafted oh and mm. made to last. And um, a, as you sort of like go in, um, you hear Matilda um, almost like she's very purposeful in, in her march um, up to the four poster bed. And just when she gets there, she, she suddenly stops and um, th there's a sharp um, intake of breath as she um, bestows she looks at the the scene that um, is standing um, on the or lying on the bed and you you can see that what appears to be um, an elderly gentleman um, you figure maybe um, 70 years old maybe 80s um, he's sort of like um, on the bed and he, what's happened is that um, it looks like his um, his throat has mm -hmm. literally been ripped um, out. There's so much blood soaking in the, the white um, sheets. And you sort of like see this, but this is not um, the, the thing that uh, has caught Matilda's eye because what she seems to be looking at is some strange writing um on the wall um roll your literacy skill oh no <sighs> yeah Do, yeah i don't think it's a point to look because it's all new to me scribbles are new uh, yeah he, he they, learned them to read maps well you, you 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 notice um, it's only a bit of information that we need to take on the rest of the adventure. <laughs> yeah. you, you sort of like uh, look at it very uh, puzzled and she mm. she seems to um, pull her robe 
um, e even um, closer my, to my her. lady. My lady, what what does the right thing say? I know a few a few st scratchings, but this this is this is beyond my my ken. Can you please tell me what it says? She sort of like turns to you, and you she no you notice that that the color has um, drained um, from her face, and she sort of like um, points it in, and almost like suddenly recognizes that you are like a farm hand or mm. a farm boy, and have um, no sort of like knowledge, and she sort of like looks at you, and she says. My father is dead. And above on the wall, as she points to the writing, it, she says, it says, revenge is mine. Um, Gulliver, what are you doing? I'm, um, I'm keeping an eye on this, on this window. How far away is the wall? Um, Oh. It's, a, it's a good 200 metres. There's quite extensive ground round this Gothic mansion, but it's quite clear. There's okay, no sort so of I'm... like um, trees or anything like that. You do... He's going to start heading over to the, uh, to the, uh, to the wall. Yeah. Just so... like directly from the, the window. Yeah. So Occasionally looking back because he's just in case something's coming out of the window. Yeah, just just you sort of like um, set off and you look back up um, um, on the window and you notice that the window is actually open. OK, and well, one side of it, it? Is, is is now that you start walking away, you notice that the broken side of it is just one side. OK, so imagine that there's two windows one of them is actually opened right the way back and okay. and the second one is broken and okay so seeing that i want to be going back and i want to be looking at the ground yeah well so as you sort of like headed off at that point you you um you see just reflecting in the light now um the the shattered glass um on the um grass it's definitely something jumped out of this part uh, and down um you you can see the glass and maybe a dint or something um it, of course it would take a, an experienced tracker um to actually um pursue or see where the the um whatever came out the window actually went can i just jump in for a second Bartleby, you you're sleeping yeah, would it be possible for Hazra to, to 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 go to one of Matilda's cells and say, "Quick, you must go to the Temple of Amriel and wake up Bartleby and get him here as quick as you possibly can. He will know what to do in this situation." Yeah, and you you turn and sort of like give these um, instructions um, to one of Matilda's maids, and you you or manservant, you, you suddenly um, the, the the servant just sort of like stands there and. Matilda sort of like turns around to you and flashes you a look as if to say it is not your place to order my servants around and she looks quite cross and without sort of like taking her eyes off your gaze um, she says go to the temple and get Bartaby. and then Thank she sort of like lady. she and she doesn't even acknowledge your thanks um, at all she just sort of like turns her head um, back to the um, site and what one of the um, girls sort of like goes um, running off and you as she sort of like um, goes out the door one, one of the um, the older um, gentleman says no Mary I will go and um, it, it is a dark and dangerous place out there it is not the best place for a maid to go I will go and he sort of like um, heads off. Um, Gulliver, what what's your plan going to be? Gulliver wants to get um, into the into the house. He wants to find out where Hasra is. Okay then. So I mean, you uh, you can pass through walls. I'm presuming. Well, I don't know. Uh, it's something that we haven't really um, we haven't really discussed. I didn't know whether or not. Uh, to send by behind in a form as a, as a 
and both is invisible and intangible permitted right, so yes. uh, it to travel anywhere with no chance of observation save those for magic um, protections okay because if you have a book okay. if you check out the house with all the doors closed okay then so what you're going to do this is quite an expansive house and of course okay. you you have no idea um where yeah. so if you roll a, a perception check and then yeah. once you've rolled that if you're successful um then you've found um hasra if not some time will pass before you actually find him okay I yeah. Got a four, six, and a yeah. So you sort of like um, probably um, hear his um, voice or some commotion up, and you you probably think that the the broke the open window is probably the the place to be, and you sort of like um, drift um, through the um, through the downstairs um, rooms and sort of like you go to the main entrance hall that you've seen before and sort of like journey up and as you come through you, you see the hurrying of um um you know servants going left right and center and then you go um into the room where where you see the um the body and hazards there uh, with matilda and the throng of people outside what would you like to do so i'm going i'm typing it into discord for you okay Okay, um, Hasra, what what's going to be your? Is there anything specific you need to do? If yes, not, uh, we can move forward until Bartleby arrives. Well, basically, before Bartleby arrives, I just want to have a look, a quick around. I mean, the windows smashed open. You say in this room. So both the windows are um, uh, forced open. What I would just no, have a look. One side is the is, other side is the is smash. Just push right. I want to have a quick look on the floor on that side of the bed to see if we can see any tracks. So, because there's got to be blood here. There's hopefully going to be footprints in the blood. So, I want to have a look so we can see any tracks of, of anything that's, that's run out. Yeah, and this is not nor you don't normally track in no, in houses. Some sort of mistakes, to it, I'm afraid. Um, so, um, what what you need to do is um, just just roll your um, tracking skill to see what you find. So that will require a spell roll, won't it? Yes. And you're going to then be. So that will be three spells that you're combining. Yes, um, there's there's a there's a special section under it. Under uh, under project sense, there's it, it's in like one of the grey boxes. Yeah, and what what does it say? What because I don't have my rules open. Right. Um, although project sensors often used to search or spy from remote secure locations, its main advantage is you're able to source to cast spells at extreme lane, uh, extreme range. Um, whilst he has the same perfect way to um, curse, assassinate a victim, um, there are certain difficulties when using it in the manner. Firstly, there's no guarantee that the source will ever know the precise location of the person which I do um, uh, oh, so the um, shaping points um, I need to have enough shaping points to um, argument uh, or augment it okay and do you have enough shaping points left? Well, I have I have three shaping points. I want to be touch almost touching when I do it. Yeah. And it, the magnitude's going to be one, and the target's going to be one. So it's gonna it's gonna like need one shaping point. 
Okay then. Um, so uh, two things are going to. Um, uh, f first of all, Hazra, while you're over at the window, you actually do see some. It looks more like drag marks. Right? There's no sort of like definable Ooh. footprint or anything like that. Mm. Um, it looks like something's run or moved. There's also quite a lot of um, different um, sort of like the the carpet is ruffled and something like that you know it's definitely that something's either definitely has come out of this window after being um in the close proximity of the bed yes okay then so um Chubberger, you need to do you have shaping points left i have three shaping points so yes i do okay then so you need to roll um an invocation don't you to, in order to cast it yeah, 81 and, out of 99. Right, so the spell um, happens. Mm -hmm. So go for it. Oh, hang on. No, um, somebody needs uh, a save, don't they? A yeah. resist. What's the resist? Willpower. Um, has to roll your willpower. Yeah, he, he, can't, he, can't, he can't beat it. Um, unless you've got a crit right okay then yeah go for it then he's part of luck no, joking. Yeah. <laughs> so Hasva in his in his mind all of a sudden hears kind of feminine voice yeah because he, he, he's not heard what you're you're saying there you would just have does that make sense hmm no, um, I meant to oh, chug a wugger. Yeah. I'm, I'm not with you. Well, you, you can pretend to be that, but as I, I just as you perceive, you, oh. what, what you said there, it's a feminine voice. Yeah. Yeah, because he hasn't heard before what you're trying to sound like. Okay. So you hear in your mind somebody say, Has a. May the blessing of my light be with you. The answers that you seek lie outside the western wing window. You're going to burn in hell. <laughs> As you will, hearing voices, he's going to literally spin around looking. Who said that? And, 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 and seeing nobody's lips moving, he, 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 he's, he's going to be like, I, 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 did somebody say something? No? To the room, nobody in the room said anything? Said anything? No? I mean, no, no, nobody's, no. Um, everybody's sort of like busy doing um, different um, things. There seems to be people coming in um, with sort of like, um, blankets and things like that they they seem to be almost like oblivious because you're over at the window now aren't you mm, yes yeah right. and he's, he's going to look around and, and see nobody say anything he's, he's still kind of he, he's assuming it's a sort of thing Amriel would say but he knows Amriel's voice because he's spoken to Amriel on while walking, well, he spoke to a lady who he thinks is Amriel while walking on a river. Um, and it doesn't quite sound right, but he, 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 he knows somebody's been out this window anyway. So what he will do is, in, has I'm confused, has this confused. Um, I, I must go check outside and see see if I can see anything there because these windows are smashed outwards. Perhaps there may be something that that um, that is out there that I may be able to see. So could somebody show me the way to this side of the building outside, please? Yeah, I mean you you can probably find your own way around there. You wouldn't need anybody to to help you. I mean it, it's just almost like a, a normal um, layout of a house. Um, so you can sort of like head down and start moving around there. Um, probably in between all this, Bartleby, you, you're probably woken up. 
um, by one of the junior um, uh, um, acol not ac yeah, it's almost like the 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 junior 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 initiates, and they sort of like wake you up and and say that there's somebody here from uh, Matilda Grimes' um, house and you know and sort of like that you need to um come quickly which i'm assuming that you will um agree to and head off yeah i just have one question real quick uh, yeah. since i got my sleep interrupted do i only get half of my normal magic points back yes you do now yeah okay. i was waiting just in case i got woke up yeah so how do you make your way round the um side of mm. the um house um um, I presume you wish to make a tracking roll at this point. I, I do indeed. Once I get below the window, I want to have a look because so, where we come out the window has had to land somewhere. Is it? Yeah. So, if, yes. Yeah. You, you, if you just roll your tracking, I can tell you what what happened. Yeah. So you, there, there seems to be some kind of track. It's no animal that you've ever seen um, before. It's nothing that you recognise. It almost like looks vaguely human but seems to have more drag in it um mm. so rather than sort of like it's a bit like um the tracks when somebody's walking through snow and yeah. it sort of like skims across then goes down and you f i mean it's really difficult for you now because there's only the light from the house and and it's dark and you know you're all human so you have no um, vision um, be beyond that and you sort of like get the general idea that it's heading towards the wall um, you do go back and say get a torch or something and sort of like follow them the best you can and you notice that it actually goes to the back wall um, of or the railings of the house because mm -hmm. it's a railings around it and then um, you can see it on this side and um, quite clearly you can see something landed on the opposite side but you would have to then go back round um if you wanted to pursue yeah. it um, any distance mm. um well hasra he, 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 he's found the track he can follow the tracks the tracks aren't going to disappear so what he wants to go back is back to that house and wait for bartleby to arrive, so at least he can use his um, assessment of the body, hopefully. And yeah. I hope that Gulliver will turn up at some point, perhaps. Okay, then, so you go um, back um, into the um, house, and um, what what does Gulliver uh, want well, to my, do? My, my spell's not going to last that far. I mean, I've got 15 minutes on it. Okay. So, I mean, if uh, I've, I think I've done what I can do here, so... Uh, I, I'll keep I'll keep an eye on the outside of the house until my until my spell is about to expire, and then I'll I'll go back to my. And um, then and then are you heading up there in person or staying at your abode? Um, yeah, I mean once once I've done that, I'll um, I'll 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 get ready, put my clothing on and uh, a cloak, and I'll. Um, I'll start heading. I'll start okay. heading there. Um, so um, Bartleby, um, you you arrive and um, Hasra is is on on guard, um, so to speak, and you're taken up to the the room um, where the um, of, let's say the murder um, has taken place. And Bartleby, Bartleby, I heard this scream, and 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 I banged on the doors to get into the house and. And they finally let me in. When we, and Matilda showed me this room. This is her father. Something has has either come in here, uh, and 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 torn out his throat. Is there anything else, perhaps you you could tell us about this? And I need to talk about something later. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I I guess I can put my my mind to the test. Let me let me uh, stretch out a little bit though. I'm still waking up partially. Uh, Barleby would like to perform a prayer, um, which is this prayer. Yeah. Uh, and here is my roll. Yeah, you you sort of like catch cast your witch sight to look for magical power or any auras of magic, 
um, the whole room um, is um, devoid of anything magical at all. Um, there's not even a fake glow of a magic trinket or anything like that. Um, you know, it's completely blank. Um, yeah, at all. Good to know. Um, in that case, after I've done my, my prayer and moved my arms and have looked around the room, I want to investigate the body, um, ideally with my healing skill, if I can determine how they died. I'm guessing yeah. it's claws, but... Um, yeah, but by all means, roll your healing. Could I use a point of luck to re-roll it? Um, yes, by all means. Pow. Yeah, it's even better. <laughs> Yeah, you, you sort of like look down and you sort of like figure that this person, um, he's got no, he's got no throat. Um, mm. You can even see um, the, the back um, spine going down the back of his neck is as if all his trachea, all his muscles, it's as if somebody just grabbed round the neck and pulled, you know, sort of like almost like with their hand maybe and just pulled it straight out that there's no sign of that part um anywhere and it's almost like we've got patrick swayze ring around the house yeah and it's just look like everything has just been removed can i ask a quick question mm. matilda is she fair light-skinned as well as melissa looked yes or... right okay thank you yeah uh, very similar well okay. they're not identical but they no, look but, um okay, similar thank you. yeah um oh, go ahead no what would you like to do i was just gonna say to, to hazra it looks like um there is no magical things afoot no no arcane trickery um that was included in this death Certainly looks like he's lacking in living functions. It's strange, my friend, because all, all I heard was the scream. I heard no breaking glass, no nothing, but yet this window is it's been smashed and and you know this. The, the, who, let me let me ask who who was it who found the body? Yeah, so do, just to let you know um, what's happening in the room now. So um, people are moving in and out. People are being ushered out. And um, one of the man, men servants comes in and sort of like says to uh, Matilda, um, says, um, 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 Lady Matilda, the, um, the town guards are on their way in force. Um, they um, wish to um, support us in any way. Um, they they will be here shortly, and um, it, she's it, at that point. You sort of like say, "Sorry, who found the body?" And Matilda, not almost like taking her eyes off the words and her her dead father, um, comments that it was one of the girls, um, one of the um, maids um, called Gabrielle, who um, is the person you saw sobbing outside, being comforted. Mm -hmm. by by um, the person. Right. Um, will is she still out there being comforted? Yeah. Yeah, Hazra will go outside and, and Bat Battleby, this was the girl who who um, who discovered the body. Maybe you could talk to her because you know what I'm like. I'm, I'm not very subtle. I'm just uh, asking. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And, indeed, I'll, I'll uh, see what I can do to, to relieve her of her pain. Um, Barlow will make his way towards her uh, with the goal of offering to pray for her uh, with a calm prayer. Does um, that require touch? I don't think so because I used it on a wolf from range. Oh yeah, okay. But Barlow is not disrespectful. He'll approach and, and ask if it's alright if he prays um, for her. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, um, well, if she's not going to disagree, here is this. She has a willpower roll if she would like, but here is my roll. Well, I, I think... Um, so you will have to take minutes for it to work or use a point of luck to reverse it. Go on with minutes. Yeah. Okay, so you, you sort of like um, mutter a prayer and cast out your calm, and she, sees, she seems to be more in shock 
rather than agitated or aggressive or emotional she's uh, it's it's definitely that she's um suffering from shock and you know your your calm spell sort of like uh, makes the sobbings decrease to a gentle um shoulder um um shudder now and again and the 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 elder more plump woman sort of like cuddles her um closer um as if um her um actions are sort of like comforting um her uh, and i guess i'll say um i'm very sorry for what you've experienced tonight um but my cohorts and i are seeking to deliver justice onto whoever perpetuated this is there anything you may have seen um well, did you get a look at anybody else that was fleeing perhaps you're asking to as a sobbing girl is that what you're asking is that who you're asking it to yes but i'm kind of glancing at the older woman too just to just to see if anybody responds yeah okay then so roll, roll your influence well for me excellent influence yeah, the, the the girl sort of like um, co continues to sort of like um, shrug and sort of like um, nestle into the woman. And the woman sort of like says to you, um, she didn't hear, she just heard um, a scream or something from the room and went to investigate as she was um, going around emptying chamber pots and opened the door. And it was probably when she saw the dead body in the candlelight that she actually screamed and that's what brought the house um to life um she she didn't see anything in the room apart from uh, matilda's father with her throat um ripped out um that's all she saw she didn't see anything it was just the the shock of seeing um the body um dead and bloody especially in torchlight um as well okay that's mostly what i wanted to confirm um and i don't think it would be nice to torture her further with questions okay uh, so i'll just bid her farewell and a uh, blessing of amriel on you That's yeah and that, as you sort of like both of you sort of like head to the main stage stairway the the city guard um approaches and matilda um greets them and you see the captain of the guard sort of like come up and sort of like um um, bow straight away and sort of like says do not worry um lady we we have the place surrounded we will find whoever has done this hideous crime fear not count bastion himself he's taken an active interest um he he will be along shortly i am sure um but do not worry we, you have our protection for the night and i'm just going to zip back to um gulliver now and gulliver you sort of like come back and you sort of like get ready to leave and as you go to your main door um to go out the door into your order um opens and you you are met by um your mentor danielle duncan i think her name is um, as she's coming in, she seems to be um, holding um, numerous um, scrolls and a couple of books. And she she doesn't seem to be expecting you um, to be in the corridor at all. And she sort of like comes in the door and she sort of like looks at you. And as she pushes the door closed and she says, Gulliver, you got my message. Yeah, yes, Mr. Duncan, I, I, I got it. I'm, I'm going to come to see you first thing, first thing tomorrow morning. But I, I have to, I have to go up to the, to, to the, to the, to the Grimes house. I, I think there's been, I think there's been a murder there. And she sort of like um, looks at you. She says, "No, Gulliver, we need to talk now." and she she almost like holds her hand backwards to the to the door and you see like a a, a waterfall um on her she's looking at you and all of a sudden you see water sort of like cascades um across her eyes and um you you recognize that she um has just 
um, cast um, uh, hold fast um, on the door um, and she, she lowers her hand and says, no, Gulliver, we need to talk now. Accompany me to my chambers. And she sort of like starts, she walks past you holding these books and scrolls and she walks past a little way and then she turns to you and says, now, Gulliver. Gulliver just sort of like, almost like put his head down and follow her. And you you follow her round um, into um, her... What time of night is it, by the way? Yeah, it's about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, Would this seem strange goings on, as far as I'm concerned? A strange goings on with... Matilda, uh, sorry, um, Danielle coming yeah. into the things that they... Oh, yes. M mighty strange and carrying a whole load of scrolls and books you wouldn't mm. expect any sort of like person out you know two or three o'clock in the morning and she's got that rather haggard look um on her face as if she's been working or doing something um for a long period and she sort of like brings you um into her office and over to um a table and she sort of like beckons you over and she sort of like holds out um, the scrolls. And throughout this speech that I'm giving to you, she um, points out each fact that sort of like comes across. She opens another book or another parchment and points to to where the... Does that make sense? So, mm, yeah. it's, it so, so as she's doing this, Gulliver wants to be looking at what she's pointing at too. Yeah. Um, so the the first uh, thing that she um, opens seems to be uh, a, a like like a bit like a want, wanted poster um, mm. grayscale part. It's not. It's actually some kind of document that has a face on, maybe a painting or something. And she she points to the person and she says, "That's Gary and Grime. He was once a very successful merchant." who operated from Lindo, you might have seen that his great, great, great granddaughter has returned. However... Matilda. Yes. She says, but Gary and Grime was not only a successful merchant. He was also, and she flips something around, a sorcerer. And you, you see something else written down almost like in a diary. A sorcerer, like ourselves, but of a different order. You see, Gary and Grime was a sorcerer from the Black Order, the Order of the Lich. It has taken me several hours to dig up this information. As you are aware, we do not. Order of the Lich sorcerers are not evil they just do something different to us we have our suspicions about them but they are not necessarily evil however several years ago and she sort of like ruffles um, but brings out what seems to be a shipping order or something like that Gary and Grime left Lindo he left everything his house his connections even his merchant items stored in storage as he before he left there was some strange happenings as a merchant he was extending his arm of trade and people became suspicious it became clear to us here in the blue order that the order of the kraken that he was not just using his merchant skills he was using some of his magic now as you are aware gulliver this is frowned upon quite seriously for merchants should not dabble in people's minds to try to persuade them by magic 
to make transactions. That is for the mundane to talk about and influencing each other. We were not disappointed, i.e. the order when Gary and Grime left, but his suddenness in leaving was very, shall we say, suspicious. He, she flips open something and she says, I have been several hours retrieving this information for I sensed something was not right. You probably too also sensed it, Gulliver. Looking back, Gary and Grime had a daughter called Melissa. She was a, a pretty girl, a knowledgeable girl, someone who knew how to use her, shall I say, charms to get her own way. She was well known and she had many suitors, many suitors who would give her great presents and gifts, great money, great parties. But these suitors really had no chance with Melissa at all. For Garion, Grime, was a very much overprotected, overprotective um, husband. It was rumoured, and I assure you this is just rumour, that if anybody continue to express interests to her or at her, then there was always, shall I say, repercussions of the most dangerous nature. And then Gary and Grime, his daughter, his servants, all left the house in the dead of night, leaving the house locked and his businesses unattended. They left by ship and never returned at all. Decades passed. The house remained undisturbed. People were suspicious of it, but even more suspicious of Gary and Grime. And then stories started to appear. Stories that were, we were unable to discuss, unable to figure out strange occurrences, very much similar to some of the accounts of the witnesses of the deaths. Yellow eyes around the house. Yellow eyes around Gentry Hill. Yellow eyes watching and following people. And then, after a few months after Garion had left, no more sightings. It was gone. It is rumoured that in the house Gary and Grime got up to some, shall we say, illegal experiments. I am not too sure what it is or what he was doing there, but Gulliver, I have a job for you. You need to find out what is either happening or what has happened. This you need to do quickly before more people die. I have come back only for a few hours rest before I return to the library to investigate more for I am sure within the library, within these books and parchments lies the answer to the current events. That I am sure and that is what I would do. Gulliver, go now and see what is happening at Lady Matilda's house and report back to me in the library 
as soon as you can. And then she sort of like waves her hand and she says, the door is open, Gulliver. Gulliver's going to immediately um, head off as fast as he can with his gippy leg, trying to make um, make his way up to the posh end of Lindo and to the Grimes's house. And you, um, Hazra, um, you mentioned about going um, out and about um, once um, daylight, sort of like, um, mm. um, um, sort of like the sun raises its head, and that you do. That there's quite a lot of guards out that, there. I was going to say, my main worry was trying to go out before the guards destroyed the evidence. Mm, yeah, and they've probably, as the captain of the guard arrived, um, they sent people out um, across the. Um, across the field so um tracking um uh, can you make for me please a perception role that is augmented by your tracking uh which is 20 percent of that which is going to be come on brain use that gray matter there is there is an augment button augment uh my augmented skill is that um which will be oh 17 percent right fantastic and perception a temper skill of 17. Ooh, oh nice very nice okay then so you the, the tracks as the cold um light of day approaches and the sun raises rises and sort of like gazes over the um the, the ground the ground is heavy with dew and as you um, feared uh, a lot of the tracks are um, gone now and messed up however with your um, critical role there you do find something that looks out of place and it seems to be a torn bit of parchment it's you you sort of like pick it up it seems to have some words on it um but round the edge it's it's almost like um blackened as if it's been burnt mm. you know or something like that and yeah it, it looks like it looks like it's quite good paper as you touch it roll roll your literacy skill Do you wish to use it's made a point? made of wood. Do, do you um, wish to make a point, use a point oh, of luck? I, could use a, I will use a point of luck with this because I, I have a feeling that... And re-roll it. It's not going to work. No. no. And so you, you do the next best thing and you take it to um, Bartleby, yeah. um, who, who um, looks at it. And what was your skill, um, Bartleby, in literacy? Uh, literacy is 39. Um, 39. Um, yeah, roll, roll your literacy skill. Knowledge. I'm going to need luck. Oh. I use my point of luck to reverse. Yeah. Take minutes. Take minutes. My last. Uh, yeah. You use your point of luck to reverse it. And yeah. You, yeah. you sort of like look. And it's... There, there's... It seems to be a very messy scroll scrawl if somebody who's written it has not got the eloquence not got the understanding of language to sort of like um write neatly everything's almost like capital letters and um very sort of like blocky um but what you see down at the corner are the simple words that say all my love and underneath it says jack and that's where we will end it for tonight so you you have now no idea what we're doing uh, no you you do you you do, do. yeah 
you are well on the way. I think one more episode and we'll wind it all One more up. episode and we'll be able to get the knowledge to move on from the, the, the other seven episodes. No, no, <laughs> I, 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 th I think you're very close to it. Can I just say um, thank you to Spoiler for the raid? I was deep in thank description. You. Um, so, thank you. So I couldn't sort of like break out, but I said, uh, how Can I just like that? to say that halfway through the session, I had actually decided that it was all a cover up to do with the trade deal. And because they'd come back to do trading, they were the merchants who had taken over the trade deal had decided that the best way to get to get the trade deal back mm. was to get rid of the grimes <clears throat> so it wasn't taken as it was them doing it they had come up with all this yeah. other thing and the other women that were being killed were just mm. so that they could then kill the daughter <gasps> and, yes. and finish finish it all that way see and i that, agree but then but then but then i don't because i thought the butler did it <laughs> I I thought Hengist did it. <laughs> That's why nobody's seen it otherwise. Uh, well, when you when you were explaining when you were doing your bit of narration, then I I sort of like thought to myself, right? So Garion is going after anybody who courts somebody that looks like Melissa. Oh. And that's why the other two people died, because one of each of them had sort of like a gift of love, uh, either See? a locket or the thing around the neck. <clears throat> and then I thought, who has been courting Matilda? See, once the description of being a Mr. black robe, stamina himself. <laughs> no, I, I think Mr. Uh, um, uh, Matilda's dad has created a, a humiculus, where it's called a, 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 a real. I'm just writing this down because it's miles but better can... than my ending. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, so I think Matilda's dad that... created Gollum. So the reason, that we, the reason that Longshanks isn't playing is that we're t next adventure, we're gonna work out that he's the next victim. He's going to be the one who's going to be killed because he's got too close to Matilda and we're gonna burst in and that and... camera's gonna come on and Longshanks is gonna be there. With his yes. neck ripped out. Ripped out. <laughs> and, and have you noticed his, his eyebrows meet in the middle? Yeah, he never trusts anybody whose eyebrows meet in the middle. All day long. Unibrow. <laughs> Unibrow, unibrow. Okay, uh, yeah, so next week should bring it uh, to a close. It's very really interesting now that you've Mr actually... Pickles hasn't said what he thinks happening. <laughs> Mr Pickles, what do you think's happening? I have you were asleep for most of it. Had, well, uh, I, I was with Amriel. I was really thinking it was a literal sewer jack, but now I think it's one of the people who courted uh, Matilda, but then got turned into a monster in that creepy laboratory with the experimental cages. Mm. But I don't know enough about the Lich Order to know what spells they probably have. Gulliver, uh, well, well, Gulliver I mean, is a player. Being I don't even know. Lich order. Yeah. So, well, well, G Gulliver, Gulliver, by the way, sorry, one second, is going to take the next part of the Hengist by just sitting at the back at home doing his own thing and letting his eyes just roam. Yeah. Not engaging in physical things. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, then. I just play by mail. So, um, is everybody um, available next week? I'll let, you, I'll let you know by four o'clock on Saturday. I, I, I think. Uh, four, I, that's not late. <laughs> early, sorry. I'm just checking my calendar because I, I think I don't know whether or not. Um, um, no, no, it'll be the second of November. Uh, I'm available I think then. The, I think therefore I spam. Yeah, it's the um, it's the sixteenth of November that I can't play, <gasps> but I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you that until just before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, could you do a, could you do a pre-recording of it and then we can just play along? What a wonderful idea! I know. Yeah, I, I, and what <laughs> you it can be one like it can be one like one of those choose your own adventure. Choose your adventure exactly. It's well, just would you like to? No. in the head well I, I, th I thought what it might be is that I, will, well, I didn't hear what you said would oh, you like I don't to wanna. 
Would you like to A, kick Hasbro in the head? Oh, B, go to the tavern. I, I was going to say something like, I say what to roll and you have to make up the story round that roll. You know, yeah. so if I say roll perception, you say we are looking around at something. We are looking for your perception roll. <laughs> yeah. When anybody yeah. else did one of those choose your own adventures, did you always keep your finger in your? No. Yes. <laughs> I always Shooting. did that. And, and then went had look and thought, no, I'll do the other one because yeah. otherwise, yeah. <laughs> because some why sometimes the the choices you you went to and it says you fall down a pit, you are dead. Mm. So what then I had to go back. Warlock of Firetop Mountain. Yeah, Steve. That's the first one. Steve Jackson and Livingston. Yeah. Very well done. Yeah. One of the other um, Twitch streamers that I watch, Bob Bear, who comes into your channel, when he does, um, when he does Star Wars, and he's doing the narration bit. Yeah. He does each of the answers, so he, he almost like goes through it, and then he goes back and does the next. Wow. And when you have several choices yeah. to, say, to see how each one progresses. I I have I always choose the top one. I always choose if there's an option, I always play evil. No matter what. Really? Yeah, no I play matter character. what. Good character. I play character. No, because uh, all my characters in Star Wars are evil. Even <laughs> even the Republic are dark side of the force. Every single mm. one, because I I just think it's that's so in world. I know. I just like being a villain. <laughs> okay, so thank you to everybody who came out and watched us play. Uh, remember, if you want to catch up with the previous episodes of the story of um, Sewer Jack, then they are available uh, on YouTube. And of course, this Sewer one, Jack. this Sorry. one will be um, available um, uh, at the end of the weekend. Please also remember that um, if you're interested in playing Mithras, then there is a Mithras podcast that comes out uh, the first of um, every month. And uh, what day will that be this year? Um, uh, there's the um, link to it um, done by myself and we have to thank um, the di design mechanism that who are actually sponsors um, us to, to play this game and gives us lots of nice things as well um, yeah I will be back tomorrow at 2 o'clock if they've sorted out the ESO um, EO EU stream um, service so do come back then if not if you would like to see more Mithras then we will be back next Saturday at 7 o'clock GMT time because our clocks go back an hour at 2 o'clock um, tonight so, nice. so Mr Pickles I don't know when your clocks go change uh, it's different from when you guys change so I'll just remember that it's uh, a little bit different now yeah. a little bit earlier for you yeah, it'd That'll be, be fine. it'd be earlier for you. Yeah, um, so yeah, so we're off to go and use the one hour um, effectively and do something different. But until then, I hope you enjoyed tonight's adventure. And it only remains for me to say goodbye and my colleagues to say hello. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See you all later. <laughs> Bye. 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 Uh, this video is sponsored by the design mechanism, the makers of Mithras. Mithras is a registered trademark of the Design Mechanism Inc. Used with permission. All rights reserved. <laughs>